Live from Cincinnati, Ohio, it's the Incarnate Studios Podcast. episode of the Incarnate Studios podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me is my best friend, Nick Udom. How's it going? It's going well, man. So it's October, it's Halloween time, my favorite time of year. Is it your favorite time of year? <laughs> of course, it's, I'm a horror fan, man, come on. Same here, and my birthday's in October, and Halloween means dressing up, and there's tons of candy, so it's a good time. Also, also slutty costumes. Those are my favorite. When <laughs> I went to school at Michigan State, I'll never forget this one girl. She was dressed in an army uniform, but her ass was hanging out. I mean, like, out, out. So I used to dress up as Michael Myers for Halloween, and I would follow strange people around and scare them. <laughs> but I couldn't scare her because I was just checking her out the whole time. Nice. Uh, I, I miss that kind of college life. <laughs> I, I want to I move away and go back there. <laughs> But back on topic, another thing that comes with Halloween in October are horror movies. So for our yeah, our inaugural podcast, we're going to review ten horror movies. Some great, some shit, um, but it'll be a lot of fun. So are you ready to start? Oh, definitely. All right, so we're going to start out with my personal favorite, Halloween. Do you remember the first time you saw Halloween? Yeah, I do. Uh, actually, a friend of mine, uh, me and my friend Scotty, went to go see the uh, a 35 millimeter print of it about two years ago. Uh, on Halloween, well, not on Halloween, but like during October. Uh, there was a theater in Knoxville, Tennessee that was showing it. It was kind of expensive, but we still did it because, I mean, when are you going to go see a 35 millimeter print of Halloween again in your lifetime? You know? But I would love to have done that. Yeah. Um, it was it was great. I'm glad we went to go see it. The only thing that sucked, though, is that there was a really small documentary that didn't make any sense in the beginning of it for about 10 minutes, and it was just really stupid and pointless. Like, they should have cut that out entirely. <laughs> it, was, it was weird. Well, my uh, first viewing of Halloween was life-changing, but not in a good way. Because <laughs> I remember as a kid, uh, I had a stepdad who would rent movies. And if you rented so many movies from Blockbuster, you could buy Halloween for $5. So if you Google Halloween Blockbuster release, there's this really obscure VHS copy of Halloween out there. And we used to have it. <laughs> and I would see the box and it would creep me out. So one day, I got the nerve to watch it. And I'll never forget, it was a Saturday. And I watched it, and I was just, I think I was seven or eight years old, and I was deathly afraid of this movie. But I had to watch the whole thing. So I watched it, it creeped the shit out of me, and then that night I had to go to my cousin's house, who was also named Michael, and that was just really fucking creepy. And I just remember coming home, and in the middle of the night not being able to sleep. And for years, that shit creeped me out, until I got older and I bought a Michael Myers mask, and I told myself... It's, I'm not afraid of it anymore, so I started wearing that damn mask, and now Michael Myers is just kind of funny to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I assume you know about the, the Myers mask. Oh, yeah, it's a Shatner okay, mask. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Just, just making sure. See, that would, for some reason, that movie became my favorite horror movie, so I watched, like, every documentary. I have 25 Years of Terror on DVD, and I've seen the first movie probably, honestly, 50 times. I watch it every Halloween that is my go-to horror movie because to me it's, I guess it's the, I guess I classify it as the best horror movie because it's it doesn't have any schlock to it like no. a lot of the Friday the Thirteenth movies <laughs> they have their their tits and gore and shitty acting and Halloween God. has tits and pretty good acting so yeah that's why I enjoy it yeah I mean you have uh, Donald Pleasance you got um, P J Souls you got uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I know I'm forgetting a lot of people. I know I am. Charles Cyphers? Charles Cyphers, yes, yes. Obviously, uh, you haven't met Donald Pleasance, but have you ever met anyone from a Halloween movie? Uh, yeah, um, Horror Hound had a Halloween reunion in 2012 in November that I went to. I was I was, I was, was being a vendor there, but I was really just going to it because I could, I, I wanted to. Um, and I got a signature from everybody. I think the nurse had the longest line besides uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Her line was like four or five hours long for just the nurse. Jeez. Now, this is the nurse from the first movie, right? The one that goes to take... Uh, they take her in the beginning to that Grove Cemetery? 
Uh, no, I think the I think it's, I think it's the, the nurse who was with Donald uh, Donald Pleasance in part one. I think that's the yeah, one. That's what I meant. Okay, okay, yeah, um, yeah, it's her, and she had a long, long line. It was so odd. I had no idea why her line was so long, but I guess she was hard to get signatures from or whatever. And but the weird thing was PJ Souls wasn't there. I don't know why. It's not like she's busy. <laughs> They're not filming a sequel to Carrie. Even if they did, she's dead. <laughs> Oh god, that's true, but it was just odd. Like you know, PJ Souls does, does a lot of the other, I guess, like lower end cons or whatever. But she wasn't there at this one. It was just weird. Now my cousin went to that Jason, the one that came to Gatlinburg, and uh, his mom's in a wheelchair, so they took her to the front of the line every time. They didn't have to wait in line to meet a single person. Because <laughs> my aunt loves horror movies. She's like old school. She went and saw Night of the Living Dead. Oh. And- yeah, because my aunt's in her 60s. She's like, oh, I grew up watching these movies. She was watching these Italian horror films that my cousin's into, the Giallo stuff. Oh, dude, I love Giallo. When it was new, because, see, my family in the late in 1969, see, they all lived in the house I live in now. But in 69, my grandpa got uprooted to go to Virginia, so they had to all move down there. And they lived about 20 miles outside of D.C., and obviously DC's got more going on than Cincinnati. <laughs> and my aunt said she would go to the movies all the time and she would see all this crazy shit because it was out down there. And, you know, she watches it to this day. She sits at home and watches, like, Bird with the Crystal Plumage and Suspiria and Opera and all these uh, Argento and Fulci films and stuff like that. So she's big into it. Yeah, a really, a really fun one to watch. Uh, it's on Hulu now, but I don't know if you have Hulu or not, but it's called Pieces. Um, it is hilarious because it's so it's so bad and nothing really makes sense. And at some point, there's even like a kung fu. I think Bruce Lee's what is it? Bruce Lee's trainer or the guy who was I don't know some some some, some guy he knew and was uh, was doing a kung fu movie nearby. They had him for like a scene and it doesn't make sense in the movie at all. It's just there. It's weird. I'll give it a shot. I'm looking it up right now. It looks pretty gory. It is gory, but I mean, like, it's it's just it's really stupid and over the top, and it's a lot of fun. I think I think the uh, the gardener they keep blaming for the killings is, is Bluto from the Popeye movie. Oh God! Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. It's funny. This all loops around. I, when I typed in pieces film, it gave me a book called Going to Pieces with a very fat Michael Myers on the cover. <laughs> It's called Going to Pieces, The Rise and Fall of the Slasher Film, 1978 to 1986. That's a... That's that really might be a good read. That might be. I might need to get that. Yeah, I'm going to click that page open. So anyway, though, real quick back to Halloween. Uh, it's definitely the horror movie that I always go back to. Actually, right now i got a spindle full of DVDs, and Halloween's on the top. Underneath it is Stan Lee's Mutants and Marvels, so we're checking three. <laughs> But I just love this movie. I can't say enough good things about it. Have you uh, have you gotten the big the big box set that, that they came out with last year? I well, I'll tell you a really shitty story about that. <laughs> Turner Classic Movie was selling it by mistake for twenty dollars on their website, so I bought two copies and then they canceled my order. Oh man! I know, but a nice silver lining to that story is my cousin Jason again. Uh, he's doing you know what a Plex server is right? Yes. He is building a huge Plex library and going to give me a physical copy on hard drive. And he has 5,500 movies <laughs> and he has bought the Halloween box set. So when I get that for Christmas from him, I will receive 5,500 movies in digital format and glorious HD. And I will watch all the Halloween, even though I've seen every one. Yeah. Cause I know, uh, I know in that one they have like the producer's cut and they've got like the different cuts of parts. I forget. It's six uh, part six. Yeah. Part six. The worst one. <laughs> I tried watch that's on Netflix. Fuck that movie. It is so stupid. Yeah, it's it's really bad. And the one I I, I have fun with the most is uh I think it's Resurrection. Shit, with, that's uh, bad with with Buster Rhymes. I love that because it's so bad. It's Trick or treat, motherfucker. Good but the the best that should have been the tagline on the poster. <laughs> I'd have bought a poster if it said that on Oh there. god, yes, I would have totally bought a poster. Um, I remember being a kid reading a Fangoria magazine about that movie. I think I was in eighth grade when it came out, and I really wanted to go see it. Dude, when I was in the fourth grade, I wanted to go see Halloween H2O. Even after I saw the first movie, and I was so afraid, I remember going, like, I gotta see Halloween H2O, it looks so amazing. And then my mom took me to see Dr. Doolittle, and I was disappointed. Oh, funny, um, I, I, well, me, me, and my, me and my cousin, my brother went to go see uh, Mighty Joe Young when it came out. And I think the same weekend, the faculty was also had come out that weekend. 
And, you know, we live, we live in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and there was a theater about 10 miles away. So my mom drops us, me, my cousin Bobby, and my brother Sean to go see Mighty Joe Young. And across the way from that theater is the faculty, and there's a guy sitting there. Because if it's a rated R movie, you, if you're a certain age, you can't go see it. So my cousin keeps going back, back and forth in and out to see if once the guy left. Once he left, he calls me up, and we leave my little brother there. And me, me and him go and sit in the faculty, and it was packed. I think there were, there were just two seats left randomly in the theater, and we went and sat down and watched the faculty. I so that's the one with Robert Patrick, right? The He's a gym teacher, yeah. Uh, I just ha- remember that. Yeah, Selma Hayek is the nurse. I think I saw it on Netflix. It was fine. I mean, definitely for a 90s horror movie, it's pretty good. Yeah. Because I'm not a fan of Scream. I recently, since Wes Craven died, what, like a month ago or so? Mm-hmm. I've been watching like some retrospectives on his life, and I watched uh, Never Sleep Again the other night. So I've been kind of check, you know, looking up on some stuff about him. And then I get to the Scream franchise, I just don't enjoy it. <laughs> I, I there's something about it. I think it's dumb. I get what they're trying to do, the whole meta horror movie, and that's fine. But I hate everybody in it except Jay and Silent Bob in Part Three. <laughs> I even saw Part Four in theaters, dude. Oof. I yeah, know. I wouldn't. I, was, I wouldn't have paid that money. <laughs> I did. I was a sucker. I used to go see... I mean, when you're on a regular episode of World Class Bullshitters, we'll talk about the shittiest movies we've seen in theaters. Because, dude, I got, like, a hundred of them. Because my friend Joel, he and I used to go to the movie every week. And we saw some shit. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I saw a movie for you in theaters. <laughs> yeah, I regret so bad. that all the time. So bad. Oh, man. Um... Yeah, I mean it's I I I, I that, that was my first time I stuck into theater. I was glad it was for a, a Rodriguez movie though, because I love that guy. <laughs> I like he did Once Upon a Time in Mexico, right? Yeah, I really like that movie. I remember watching that in college because I just I had a friend that was a big Johnny Depp fan, and then he got his eyes cut out or whatever. So then I really liked it because I don't like Johnny Depp. <laughs> I mean, the real guy might be nice, and I don't want him to get mutilated, but in the movies. I'd rather see him get beat up and hurt. Oh, definitely. But back to Halloween, uh, do you have a favorite kill? Mm, favorite kill. Favorite kill. Um, I want to say the boyfriend with the knife in the, in the door where he just kind of sits there. Oh, Bob? Bob, yeah. Because, I mean, that's the first time, I think, in those movies where that kind of happens, where, like... You know, somebody's like somebody's lifted up, stabbed through, you know, something, and then they're just left there. They don't fall down. They don't slide off. It's just they're there. That was the one the first time I saw the movie that really stuck with me because I have a door in my kitchen that looks like that. And I'd be like, how can you hang from that with a knife? It just <laughs> uh, made me think. I think my favorite kills probably – I don't know. I like that kill too. I think that is the best. I just like the suspense for – what's her name? Annie, the dark-haired girl? Mm-hmm. I think the build-up for that was pretty awesome because, you know, she goes, the door is locked, she goes in the house, all this shit, and then she opens the door, and the audience goes, wait, the door the door was open? What the hell? And you see it's all foggy in there, and then boom, that sound effect hits, and he chokes her and then slits her throat, and he just, that was, to me, that was the one that was the most shocking, but I think the one that sticks with me is the Bob right on the door. Oh, yeah, definitely. Linda's death is stupid. <laughs> yeah, she gets choked with a phone cord. <clears throat> Yeah, and I mean it's it, it, it's really comical the way they did it, you know, totally. and um, be, because because Lori's on the phone on the phone with her and she's like, all right, whatever, and then just kind of hangs up and it's, you know, it, it, she she thinks uh, she's having sex. Yeah, her famous squealing as she says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I really like about that movie too is how it builds perfectly. The opening's cool, but then you get you know that the Halloween afternoon. And it builds to the night, and all the people's deaths build up to this awesome ending. And the last, like, I guess, what, 15 minutes of that movie is just, like, electric. It's perfect. There's not a beat missed. I love it. It's very true. It's very, very true. Um, I mean, the, I mean the, the one thing I really hate is the uh, the Rob Zombie remake. Ugh. Because, I mean, there's no need to there's no need to know any more than what um, Dr. Loomis says about Michael Myers. Like, you know, is it, like, what he says about him in the first part of the movie is enough. You don't need to know any any anything more. They also kind of fucked that up with Halloween too. The <clears> whole what was it the? I know it's, it looks like Sam Hain, but it's like shaman or whatever the cult. Yeah. 
and the cult of Thorn and all that. We'll get to that in a minute, but I'm with you. The Rob Zombie one, I remember seeing that. I was a freshman in college, and we all went together to go see that because I was so pumped. And I liked the second half of the movie, you know, the part that essentially is a remake of the original Halloween. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just like the 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 shortened version of the of of the original Halloween, and it's like it's just compressed and. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, th- there was, and like that's another thing I hate about Rob Zombie. His his stuff is always looks like it's shot in the seventies. It's always like white trash people, and they're always mad at each other all the time. I guess that's Rob Zombie or Robert Cummings' life. You know? <laughs> Pissed off white people with shitty technology. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess the phrase is anachronistic. I mean, there's problems with that movie because in the beginning it looks like it's in the seventies. People have the haircuts. There's the cars. There's all that shit. But then. Would that make the Halloween part like the eighties or nineties? It doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't. I mean, it the the timeline doesn't make sense, and it's just it's really thrown out. And yeah, it's <clears throat> because I mean that movie was made in what two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. So then, even then, Mike Myers is what in the in the seventies. I mean, the kid's ten. It's. 30 yeah 30 years later so he's 40 maybe 45 and it <laughs> that doesn't work no it doesn't work it doesn't work at Cause, all because that would have to make Lori be you know like three years younger than him if michael myers 40 that makes her 37 but she's in high school like she must be really fucking dumb <laughs> No, I, I, that movie is shitty. I mean, the sequel's worse. We'll get, we'll talk about the Rob Zombie Halloween two if we talk about the original Halloween two. But I just remember thinking, I guess the first time I watched Rob Zombie's Halloween, I thought it was cool, but upon repeat viewings, it just pisses me off. Oh yeah, I know. <clears throat> and one thing I hate is that <clears throat> they uh, they included it in that Halloween pack. Both those movies. They did. Yep. It's in there. I don't I know why. Compl- for completionists, Ugh. that's cool, but I don't. I look at that as like a separate franchise. Yeah, it's a separate thing, and I mean, it's it's not anywhere near the original stuff. I mean, yeah, I know from like part four on, kind of everything goes downhill uh, because Donald Pleasance died, and you know the producer changed or whatever. But he got killed. Yeah, that's true. He got killed in a car bombing in Middle East. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a car. Yeah, it was a car bomb in the Middle East. Um, <clears throat> but. It, you know, everything kind of diminished and everything got kind of, you know, a little messed up and everything. But still, Rob Zombies is just like this <laughs> giant it, shit stain on the series. On the series, I agree 100%. <laughs> you know, quick side note, Halloween 4 was released the day I was born. So there you go. You can always tie me to that <laughs> fucked up movie. The day, the year, that is my birthday. Oh, nice. <laughs> so... I mean, I know if anyone asks, like, what were you doing when Halloween 4 was made? I was being born, literally. <laughs> but let's talk about a good Halloween sequel, Halloween 2. Um, I love Halloween 2. I think I'm, I... I don't want to contradict my story. I think I may have seen Halloween 2 first. I don't know. I know I saw it when I was really young as well, and it scared me. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, and I mean, I, I like it a lot because it is one of the first times we see a direct, a direct sequel from part two, from from a yeah. from, from from the first movie, from a for a, a first movie, I should say, because I mean, it is literally a direct sequel. You see Laurie in the hospital recovering from the crazy night she's had. Doctor Loomis is also recovering, and you know, it's just like everybody's kind of gone nuts, and you know, it's they're tr- they're trying to get everything back together, and Mike Myers is still on the loose. Every time you refer to him as Mike Myers, I keep thinking of Austin Powers I'm or Wayne's World. Because I got a Wayne's World hat sitting right next to me. That's what I'm going out for on Halloween. Oh, nice. Yeah, Dan's going to be Garth. No, but uh, like the ending of Halloween 1 is perfect. You know, She goes back to her house. Michael Myers comes after her. Loomis saves the day. Loomis looks out the window, and Michael Myers' body is gone. Now, if you have to make a sequel to Halloween 2, or Halloween... I think Halloween 2 is pretty good because, like you said, it picks up directly after the first movie. And it's interesting because there's a lot that goes on that it, it makes the night feel longer than it should. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's a bad thing. Because, okay, when I when you watch the first Halloween movie, what time do you think the movie ends roughly? I say, like, 11 or 12 at night is when, like, Michael Myers gets shot and falls out the window. 
Yeah, that's the, that's about what I would say as well. I mean, you know, it seems really late, and I mean, I guess that would mean she would get admitted to the hospital at around what one or two, depending. Well, if you, wa- I recently watched Halloween two, and I think it starts at ten o'clock, so we jump back an hour or two, and then is the movie in real time? Hmm. I mean, I know she has like a, a lucid dream and all that stuff like that. But, I mean, not a lot happens that couldn't happen in real time. I think it would be almost more interesting if you look at it in real time. Because it makes Michael Myers seem like a machine, even though he walks at a snail's pace that whole fucking movie. <laughs> What's the deal with that? Seriously. <clears throat> like, Dick Warlock, did he, like, break his leg or something? <laughs> I honestly don't know, but I think that's just a, a thing that... Um, that happens in, in, those, in those slasher movies. Like, the killer has to be... Has to be slow. Has to be cunning. Has to be, you know, in command and in control. Therefore, he walks calmly and slowly. And everybody who's erratic and irrational runs and trips and falls and you know all that other bullshit. Um, I think that's what it kind of represents in that in that aspect. Because I mean, I don't get it because he's like he can be one he can be somewhere once and somewhere you know at another point, you know, the next moment. And it's very very weird. So he didn't walk or shuffle around in the first movie. I'm not saying he ran, but I mean, it showed him walk in that movie when he got out of the car in the beginning, and he walked faster just to spy on somebody than he did in that whole second movie. I mean, it was kind of weird. And then I know, maybe I guess I could say because he fell out the window, he's hurt. I mean, I guess I could buy that uh, excuse. (laughs) But I mean, if he got shot six times, and that didn't slow him down, why, why would it, like, a, a minor bruise in his leg slumped? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm looking too far into it. But let's talk about the positives. I mean, you got most of the same cast back, so there's great continuity. The only thing that bothers me is Jamie Lee Curtis's wig. That's true. And, I mean, you do have uh, the last Starfighter guy in the movie. Oh, it's Lance Guest? Yeah. I hate that movie. <laughs> I find it's so stupid. That's the one with the shitty CGI, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that guy's head that looks like a butt? Yes. I used to have to watch that at my uncle's house. He loved that oh, movie. my God. I love that movie so much. It's so it's, it's so ridiculous. It doesn't. I, I agree with you. It doesn't make any sense. And it's crazy, but I just love the whole, like, fantastic uh, epicness that it is. Like, like, this kid plays a video game in, the, in a trailer park in the middle of nowhere before, you know internet and all that other shit and aliens like an alien civilization finds him and is like all right you beat the game you get to fly the real thing you know and come out to space and you know and all that all that good stuff it's so weird have you ever uh are you a kevin smith fan or not really um i'm i am kind of i'm kind of have you ever seen the clerks cartoon yeah actually i have it oh so okay there's an episode where randall plays this game called like egyptian digger or something <laughs> where he's, like, the best at building pyramids. So these real-life Egyptian guys kidnap him and make him work in, a like, a cavern as a slave to build pyramids underground or something. <laughs> so I guess it's the same premise, but just stupider. <laughs> yeah, I think I kind of remember that episode. Because there's only six of them. I wish that show would have lasted longer. When I met Brian O'Halloran at Horror Hound uh, 2011, I was like, man, whatever happened to the Clerks cartoon movie? He's like, you know... We were going to work on it, and stuff just happened. He's like, that would have been my dream job. I'm like, well, it was great, and you have a great voice, so maybe one day it'll happen for you. Yeah, because, I mean, Kevin Smith's got all kind all kinds of money and power now that he could probably do it. I mean, he could probably call probably call up, you know, Rodriguez and get it put on El Ray or something. He should do something like that, because all he does nowadays is smoke pot and make podcasts about Batman, <laughs> which are fine, but at the same time... You know, make something I can go out and see, dude. Did you see Tusk? Ah, uh, I saw clips of it online. Okay. It looked like shit. It it was. I was hopeful. I really was hopeful. Like I really, I heard good things, and I was like Kevin Smith. You know, it's not good. <laughs> I I really I, tried, and it's just not good. That guy, uh, what's his name, Robert Kurtzman? Yeah. He was at. Horror. He was at Fandom Fest with us, and then he was also at the Cincinnati Comic Expo. And I went over and talked to him for a minute. I was like, "Dude, you guys worked on Evil Dead too, right?" He's like, "Yeah." And I went, "Oh man, I love that fucking movie. Everything about it's great. It's so cool that you guys worked on it." And he was pretty nice. That's awesome. I think I met. 
Okay, so it's Howard Berger, Greg Nicotero, and him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can can be effects, yeah. Okay, I met not Greg Nicotero at a Horror Hound in like 2012, and he was really really cool too. Yeah, they, I mean, like all those effects guys are really really cool people. Um, I remember the the only person I've met that's in effects that is kind of an ass is um, Tom Savini. Yeah, my cousin says that too. Because like I I, I I love I love his work because I mean I watched The Burning, I've watched Friday the Thirteenth Part One, I've watched Prowler, I mean I've watched um all like a lot of the old movies he he helped make, and I was like you know man I'm a huge fan I loved everything you did and things like that you know, and you, you've been a great influence on you know great horror movies and he's like thanks man and signs my book and just like hands it back to me. <laughs> That's kind of disheartening. It's like no dialogue, no nothing. And like, well, the thing also is walking around the whole convention in Crocs, so. <laughs> that kind of kills your ego. Yeah, I mean, he had that cock gun in From Dusk Till Dawn, and now he wears Crocs, so. Yeah. Yeah. He was also in Django, and he was like whipping um, some guy with like two two or three whips or one of the whips. And I mean, he looked like a badass in that. And this is like, dude, we're, dude's, you know, he wears Crocs, man. You can't do that. Well, another yeah, thing I... is... Um, oh, no, go ahead with your thought. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, there was... In Gallenberg here, we have a haunted house. Uh, it's by Ripley's. or It's a Ripley's owned haunted house, which means it's shit. And <laughs> um, one of the girls worked there, and she was a, a part of the makeup team, and she wanted to hire somebody new on, and she got somebody who had gone to Tom Savini's makeup school. And apparently this kid didn't know the basics of using latex, like didn't know how to use it, didn't know what it was or something along those lines. And it was just kind of like, I, what? <laughs> Cause I mean, I've, I've seen tutorials online, how to use it. And I mean, I've used it in basic shit that I've done and I'm not a makeup artist, but it's not difficult, you know? And it's like, this is, this is what, this is what you're paying 60 and 70 grand to go be taught and not get a job in. Poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now Savini didn't do the effects in Halloween 2 because I know they they amped up the effects because of the Friday the 13th, the first one, because mm -hmm. they were trying to compete with that. Uh, I guess they succeeded. I mean, the few kills that are gory look good. You know, the lady that gets burnt. Oh, and, uh, yeah, the uh, the the hot the hot tub. I guess the hot tub scene. And who else gets a on screen death? The security guard with the hammer in the head. Yes, that was really good. The only one that's stupid to me is the girl in the beginning that Michael Myers just, like, jumps up and stabs her in the neck and she falls over. Well, even that, I mean, even the head nurse who kind of just, like, he puts an IV in her arm and just, like, blood pours out all over the floor. Like, what was that about? Like, it, yeah. you, you don't even see that. It just happens. Same with the doctor. I mean, doesn't he just walk towards him with yeah. the needle and shows it from the side a little bit? That's true. That's true. Or, no, he doesn't even show the doctor. Doesn't somebody... Doesn't somebody find the doctor and he walks up behind somebody and stabs him? That's what it is. Okay. Anyway, so there's a couple off-screen kills in that movie which are kind of dumb. Yeah. And I mean, that was during the 80s. I think during the 90s that stuff started to diminish because of uh, MPAA. MPAA, yeah. Because of the rating system because they had to they had to diminish them uh, a lot because of just violence and throwing out of hand and stuff. It was real stupid. You know, uh, if we're going to rate the Halloween movies, I would give the first one a 10, and I'd probably give the second one maybe a 6. How would you rate them? I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far because, I mean, I, I could give the other movies in that franchise a 6. So I would give I would probably go first one 10, second one probably an 8. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, because, I mean, there are far worse ones that that deserve a 6 or lower in the, in the series, and I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I can okay in my in the Jeff's film reviewing system a ten is a great perfect movie a nine's almost as good as a ten sometimes I wonder why I don't give them a ten like the Avengers I love that movie I'd give it a nine just not a ten quality in my eyes but anyway with Halloween like I've never seen season of the witch fully so I can't give it an honest rating but <laughs> like four is just passable I can sit through it and it's okay five is garbage <laughs> six is a one. I gave it a one star on fucking Netflix. If I could give it a zero and still count it, I fucking would. I think that movie's so retarded. It's not even scary. There's not a scary moment in that fucking movie. No, there's there no isn't. suspense. It's like Michael Myers walking around in the that fucking hospital at the end, and there's like lighting. The lighting is like flashing, and you see people getting killed in the operating room. It's it's just shit. And then doesn't make sense. Uh, 
H2O to me is as good as part four. So Yeah, um, H2O of- and Resurrection kind of come back to the teen slasher aspect of it. You know, they they come back to that instead of this vast storytelling, and it's like, you know, the thorn thing and 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 that whole weird weird backstory that nobody knew about. It's kind of like the whole thing with, um, what the hell was it? In front of their teenth franchise with uh, uh, Jason goes to hell with the guy that apparently has been tracking Jason throughout all ten or like eight other movies. Yeah, it just like he just shows up all of a sudden in part nine. Don't know why. Um, it's that whole thing all over again. It's dumb. It is. I think they should have, uh, I don't know. I, I'm glad that they got rid of the Cult of Thorn at number six or whatever. Uh, I only wish that in Resurrection they wouldn't have had that stupid, you know that, like, high school kid that was watching the girl? Yeah. Like, what the fuck was that story about? <laughs> I don't get that. And they're like, oh, he survived, yay! And then Michael Myers is burned. I mean, where the fuck else would you go? I mean, the Rob Zombie movies are shit, as we've established, but where could you go? Well, at least at least Resurrection and H2O are fun. Like, they're shitty, they're imperfect, but they're fun. And I, you know, I'll, 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 take, I'll take fun and entertaining over over scaring me any day. And, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm I love teen slashers like with a passion. I love those movies so much. I don't know why. You give me teens in a shitty situation with one killer trying to slowly uh, pick them off. I'll watch that all day. I think those movies just really miss Donald Pleasance. That's true. They do. They really, really do. Well, we've kind of indirectly covered the entire Halloween franchise, <laughs> so hey, that's awesome. That wasn't on. They weren't on our top ten. They were just two of them. <laughs> So let's talk about another franchise that has a fuckload of sequels, some awesome, some shitty, and that would be A Nightmare on Elm Street. Ooh. I used to be so afraid of Freddy Krueger as well. There's going to be a theme of, on this show. I was so afraid of this shit, and now I like it. Yeah. So, well, I mean... I was one of those kids that would look at the boxes and get scared. Yeah, my, my mom made me watch them for, uh, at a young age to kind of depussify me. From being scared from all this shit, so now I love them, and I go to conventions, and I get things signed, and take pictures, and, you know, all that other good shit. (laughs) The funny thing is, my mom's more afraid of this shit than I was as a kid. Like, now, as an adult, my mom's afraid of this shit. (laughs) She is the biggest wuss. She was actually, she was afraid of the Goosebumps movie. Oh my god. You can't be... She was like, oh! She, like, grabbed my arm, like, mom, chill. Because I haven't taken her to a movie in a couple years. Or take that back. I took her to see Kingsman, and that was the first movie I took her to see in, like, five years. Kingsman, so. Kingsman was good. That movie was excellent. I saw it for free. Ooh, even better. Even better. I, know. I got one of those uh, pre-screening tickets online. Very, very nice. I take those surveys or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I love those. But, yeah, Kingsman, like, you're a James Bond fan, so am I. And, I mean, we'll, we'll mention that next month, I guess. <laughs> Oh, for sure, dude. We're going to do a whole... Like I said, it's going to be ridiculous how in-depth James Bond month is. Definitely. Um, but, yeah, the, like, I I love I love Freddy Krueger so much. And, I mean, his... Thankfully, his backstory is in the movies. And, like, not all of them are good, by any means. But at least his backstory is in those movies, and there doesn't have to be a prequel or anything to them to show that. Yeah, and when they made the fucking remake, oh, my God. Okay, I'll, I'll give the remake one thing, though. I honestly thought the whole movie that he was a victim of circumstance and that he was innocent. And I was like, oh my god, that makes the story so much more in-depth. And I was really into it. And then uh, it wasn't, and it was all bullshit, so fuck that. But the original one is great. Well, okay, that, uh, I understand that. But also, um, one thing they did in the remake is make it to where he just kind of like felt children up, like, you know roughly or some shit he didn't kill them like in the original one he just kind of like touched them inappropriately he was just a pervy uncle yeah he was a, he was a, he was a pervy uncle basically so they made him and they burned him alive for that it's like uh, I, that's a little excessive maybe go to jail for the rest of his life or be called you know be a registered sex offender yeah but not burn him alive like that's a little fucking much yeah, the whole murder thing in that one was a little yeah. Fucked up. I mean, if you the, yeah, I mean, if if, if uh, one thing I need to send you is the uh, the first episode of the Freddy Freddy show that happened like you know twenty years ago or whatever. Um, that first episode is amazing because you see him you see him on trial in this plastic box with like you know um 
with the, with the chains on his wrists and on his ankles, and they're going through the court case and showing pictures of the kids he killed, and the families are there and everything. And finally, the judge gets to a point. He's like, "We well, got to let him go because like some cop didn't cross the T or dot the I, and they were arresting him." And it's you know, it's uh, it's dismissed. I think I have that on videotape actually. What? Yeah, dude. I was. Do you remember? Have you ever heard of a store called Value City? Never. Okay, Value City was a chain of stores all over where I live. Multiple states, so I guess it just didn't reach your area. <laughs> but they would have, they would have tons of stuff. Like it was new stuff, but every once in a while you'd find some really obscure st- uh, items there. And I picked up the was it Freddy's Nightmares, was the name of the show or whatever. Yeah. On VHS for I think it was like two ninety nine. I got it downstairs wrapped in plastic. You, Still, dude, you new. could probably sell that for some serious money. I never opened it up. It's like a a black it's a purple background with a black silhouette of him yeah because you could probably sell that for some serious money <laughs> well hey I'll, I'll hold on to it i would I, I would I, I would take it to horror hound and see what you can get for it <laughs> i'll have a table there i'll put 50 bucks on it if somebody pays 50 bucks i made a 47 dollar profit <laughs> exactly but that would be amazing yeah and i mean like the, the way the way that he reacts in that first episode is amazing because he's a badass like the parents find his lair, and he just he just stands there, and he's like, "Yeah, I fucking did it, and you'll never be able to prove it because they can't convict me twice." So they they literally just pour gasoline on him while he's while he's standing there in his in his outfit, and they set him on fire, and he's like, "I'll be back," you know, and that's his last line. And you know, then it goes into the show, and he comes back and starts killing kids again, and I mean, you know, it's it's a really really good like an amazing thing that they, that I wish would have kept going or at least had a better run than it did. Uh, on uh, never sleep again, they talk about it and it was pretty interesting. Some of the episodes, I think Brad Pitt was on it. Yep. Yep. So and Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt got to start with Freddy Krueger. Yeah, definitely. Maybe we should try to get in a nightmare on Elm street film and see where we go in 20 years. <laughs> but I mean, I just remember, Back to the actual movie, I just remember being so afraid of Freddy Krueger before I actually saw him. I remember seeing him on a book as a kid and being like, oh, that's scary. And then I would see the box art in the grocery store because our Kroger actually had a video store department in there. And yeah. it was creepy. Yeah, so did ours. I think, yeah, it did. And, um, yeah, they'd, they'd have all kinds of weird VHS tapes and all kinds of weird stuff there, man. I loved it. Those old media releases, you remember those? Yeah. <sighs> Bad memories every time I see that logo. <laughs> but I actually, that the Nightmare on Elm Street, I was just, you know, creeped out by it. And I didn't sit down and watch it until I was in high school. It was on uh, IFC. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember sitting down in the afternoon and watching it and thinking how good it was. Yeah, IFC right now is doing their, um, I think IFC's got a lot of stuff going on. One thing I hate about IFC during Halloween, though, it really pisses me off. Um, they'll have nudity. Which is awesome. They'll have they'll have language, which is okay, but they won't have the full kills. What? I'm not kidding. They will not show the full kills for some reason. I mean, take away the language, give me the nudity, and give me the full kills. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, those movies barely have any cuss words in them. I mean, Freddy Krueger says bitch a lot, but that's about it. I agree, and but it's like you know, I watch these movies for the kills. At least give me that. Yeah, I'm with you there. It's a, I didn't know that, because when I watched it, IFC wasn't doing commercials. This was probably about 2004. Yeah, yeah. Early, early on, I mean, that's how they were. But now they're, you know, like any other corporation, they're, they they love money and they want more of it. So it's now it's like... And they got those stupid fucking shows like, was it uh, Marin and Portlandia and that show about the two girls that play guitar? Yeah. Those shows are crap. That's Those are like hipster comedies that... Just don't appeal to me. I mean, I get the humor. I can watch it and go, "That's the joke." I just don't like it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I've watched Portland a little bit, and I'm just like, I don't like this. I don't like Fred Armisen. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of his. I, I know I've been watching uh, Blunt talk a lot lately with uh, Patrick Stewart, which is hilarious. I did see the trailer or the whatever for that on TV because I go to my aunts a lot, and they watch a lot of IFC. It looked funny. Basically, it's Patrick Stewart as a drunk, drugged out. Um, He's a news anchor. News right? anchor, yeah, basically. And he always fucks up and he's always trying to like, you know, do the right thing and stuff, and it's it's hilarious. It's so funny. Seeing him in a different role where he's just like out of his element and everything, and he's really funny. He is hilarious. So it's Ron Burgundy the T V show? Yeah, Ron Burgundy the T V show, but with a very 
With a better actor. With a better actor. <laughs> I love uh, Will Ferrell, but he is not the best actor in the world. No. <laughs> Just, I'm, I love your answer. No, flat out no. <laughs> but uh, on A Nightmare on Elm Street, what's your favorite kill? Ooh, let's see. You'll probably be the same one as me. Uh, Girl and Guy in the Bedroom? Oh, no, I'm going with Glenn. Glenn. Oh, wait, the fucking... Johnny Depp? <laughs> the blood tornado? Oh, my God, you've never seen anything like that before or since. That's true. That's true, you haven't. That's very true, you haven't. But I love the aspect of, of, of like, this girl all of a sudden convulsing, and this guy is in the room with her, and he's as terrified as she is, and just seeing her get ripped apart before his eyes, like, that is kind of horrifying. Imagine if you were that guy. Like, it would be completely horrifying to see that. And, um... That's what it, and the fact that he has to run away from the cops because everyone thinks he did. Exactly, it. exactly. And I mean, you know, it's it's just crazy. But uh, no, the one the, the one you picked is actually, I mean, that's iconic. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. You honestly can't. And uh, I, I, you, you've seen the documentary. You know how they did it and what a pain in the ass it was. Oh yeah, and how almost pe- people almost got killed. Yeah. <laughs> the one guy got electrocuted partially or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the one scene that could have been cool if she would have been killed is the bathtub scene. Yeah. Where she's sleeping. That's That part of the movie is so fucking cool. Definitely. The only part of that movie I find hokey is when she falls asleep at that dream clinic and her hair turns gray. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's a little much. Heather Langenkamp's fine. I mean, she's no Jamie Lee Curtis, but she's good. Yeah, she is. She is. I know she shows up in another one. Like, I know she shows up in, like, part... I think she shows up in Dream Warriors... She is in Dream... And is she, she's not in Part 4 as well. Is she, no. Does she get killed in Dream Warriors? She might. I'm not sure. But I know she's like the therapist or whatever there with the kids. Because, see, that's my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Yeah, it has its own song. Yeah, by... Uh, was it Dawkins? Yeah. It's got its own song. You know, for, if it wasn't for copyright reasons, we'd start singing it right now. <laughs> but, you know, I don't... I want to try to monetize this. So of course, of Dawkins course. to be like, hey, Jeff, you owe us... Fourteen dollars, but Doc and I only made twenty. Well, that's our fucking song. <laughs> or even worse, so. even worse, they ask you for fractions of of, of one cent. I just be like, here's here's a dollar. <laughs> Piss off, Doc. <laughs> you got a platinum record out of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that franchise is weird though, because it goes from the movie. The first one's great. The second one's shit. Well, the second, the third one's well. Great. I mean, you, you know about the second one being the the gayest horror movie ever. Yep. Yeah. That was actually the first. I take the back. That was the first Nightmare on Elm Street I ever saw. That wasn't the first one. I'll tell you the story. I hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This. After watching, did you feel kind of conflicted? No, I felt really uncomfortable about one scene though, and it wasn't any of the gay undertones. It was the the pool party scene where the guy gets slashed in the face, and it shows his face split open. Oh. For some reason, that part of the movie always stuck with me because I had got like paper cuts recently, and I couldn't imagine getting those like across your fucking face. Ugh. That's true. <laughs> But my mom and I were sitting down at dinner. We used to have like a... Remember when you'd have those little TVs that would have the fucking antennas on them? Oh, yeah, you dude. You just like carry around? Yeah. We had one of those in our kitchen nook, and I used to watch movies on it while I would eat dinner. So on a Sunday night, or Sunday afternoon, that movie was on TV, and I just remember watching it thinking, this isn't too scary. <laughs> and then that part with the scratched face, and I remember taking out the garbage, and I was like, ooh, he could be out there somewhere. So I took out the garbage real quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think we've all we've all had that reaction, <laughs> dude. Like I told you before in the Halloween section, for years I'd be like, "Oh, Michael Myers could be out there." It was really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, after Dream Warriors, I think was it the uh, what was number four called? Dream Master. Dream. Ma- I, I I honestly don't know. That one's all right, and then I think the fifth one's pretty shitty, and then, oh my god, Freddy's dead, that's terrible. <laughs> nice hearing from you, Carlos! Yeah, it... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's, like, they... I love I, I love the character, but, like, after I think the third or fourth one, the, fire, the franchise takes a dive until um, the last movie. Oh, New Nightmare? Yeah, New Nightmare. I, I mean, Freddy Krueger's always funny. I actually like him when he's not trying to be scary. 
because I don't think there's enough horror comedy, at least in that time frame. <laughs> Everything was trying to be a slasher or a straight-up comedy. Yeah. And Freddy Krueger was arguably... Would you say Freddy Krueger was more famous than Jason and Michael Myers? Um, yeah, because he talked. Makes sense. Yeah, because he had a personality. He wasn't just like... You know, a knife wheel, a little, like, you know, just somebody who is just very silent and killed everybody and snuck up behind you. He had a personality. He had a shtick. He had his one-liners. You know, he had the cool little gadgets to kill everybody with and very imaginative kind of thing, which, you know, that's made, that made Freddy Freddy. Because, I mean, if you if you see, I think, what's it? What's it? The, damn it. Some talk show. And if you, you, you watch them on YouTube now. Um... Arsenio Hall? Thank you, Arsenio Hall. If you were to see Arsenio Hall with Freddy Krueger and Jason, I mean, the Freddy Krueger one's by far better because he can talk to the guy. Jason is just Kane Hodder in a in a in an outfit just sitting there I saw <laughs> staring <that> at him. <laughs> There's also one where he talks to the Ultimate Warrior and Macho Man Randy Savage, so those are pretty good episodes. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, th- I think I, I think the, the best one of those is um, the... Uh, the Vegas boxing thing they did were for, for Freddy versus Jason. Just like my poster. Yeah. Like they did a, like they did one of those boxing things for that. And I was like, that is amazing. They had this whole, like, yeah, that's, yeah it was great. That footage is on the uh, DVD. Yes, it is. Cool. Yes, it is. I, I love it. I love it so much. It's so ridiculous and over the top. It's great. See, that's what the Freddy Krueger character can lend itself to. It can be deathly scary, but it can also be like, Pants shittingly funny. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a wet dream always makes me laugh. <laughs> that part, even in the remake, I thought that was fucking funny. <laughs> well, in the remake, he looks like he looks like a burnt Abe Sapien. That is true. He looks like a a, a fried a deep fried Abe Sapien. <laughs> I, you know, are you a fan of the Hellboy movies? Because I thought the first one was good, but I didn't like the second one. The first one I loved, I mean, it, it definitely needed a third one to kind of wrap everything around, honestly. It really, it still does, and I doubt it's ever going to get made. You know, I mean... But we'll have 28 fucking Hunger Games. Uh, I, I hate book movies. I hate book movies as well, because the last one's always split up in two. That's always the thing. The last one's always split up in two. Thank you, Harry Potter. If I ever have a series of novels that get adapted into a film, fuck it, I'm just going to have all the novels turned into one film. Like, 12 hours long. I'm like, you don't like it? Tough shit, don't see it. <laughs> And then they'll never make a movie based off one of my books again. <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, it's it, it, it's money and it's it's politics and it's Hollywood. I mean, that's just the way they do things. You can't really... You gotta play the game. You gotta play the game. Yeah, exactly. You gotta play the game. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I I love Freddy. I've always loved Freddy. Hell, I even have... I, I, I think last, last Halloween I bought the actual sweater that fit me just to have it, just to wear it out, honestly. Isn't... Isn't that what's in your Facebook profile pic? Yes, actually it is. Um, I wear that sweater out during October just because. It's It has burn marks in it that's cut in certain places, but I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, a Freddy sweater can look like a piece of shit and still get the authentic effect. That's true. I mean, like, this one, like, you can tell, like, it's a really shitty, shitty sweater. And they obviously took, like, an, a... Like, a a piece of, like a hot piece of metal and like cut through the nylon or whatever to make like the the burn marks or you know stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's <laughs> it was it was like fifty bucks and it should have been twenty, but you know I wanted it and they had my size finally and I got it. So I would have loved to have seen the process of them making that sweater. <laughs> <laughs> now I did I did make a Freddy glove. How'd that turn out? It took me a month to do it. I was I was pretty much like like playing with metal in my den and like slowly hammering <laughs> things out, <laughs> cutting things with like tin snips. It was so bad. Like I cut myself so many times and oh man. I was just gonna ask that. Yeah, I cut myself a lot because just dealing with the metal <laughs> and everything, and trying not to you know get tetanus and shit. It was so. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that sucked though was the rivets I had to order from like China. So you sound like Dixie now. <laughs> hey, I'm a dedicated fan. Her her reason is different. <laughs> well, she's a dedicated capitalist. <laughs> hey, I respect capitalism, but... Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to say. Should we have invited her on one of these things? Yeah, it's up to you, man. I would I would do it once. That's a, I, that's a I, I would do it once and then not do it again. <laughs> I honestly... 
I, I'd like to invite Veronica since she works, you know, on movies. Yeah, because the the interview I did with her was fun. Like she knew all the tricks and stuff like that, and she she's worked with actual name like big names and stuff. And I mean, she'd be down with it, you know. I feel like I know her, and I've never spoken to her in person. Yeah, dude, she's cool as fuck. Like she'll always talk to me, and like you know, whenever she needs help with editing and things like that, she'll always be like, "Hey, can you do this real quick?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And I'll just she'll give me the file or whatever she needs modified or a picture she needs, and I'll do it and send it back to her. And I mean, she's real cool about everything. I'm sure I'll see her at Horror Hound. Oh, definitely. And maybe I'll talk to her this time. She said, that. "She's like, I saw you there." <laughs> I'm like, "Did we speak?" She goes, "No, I saw you from a distance." I went, "Well, then I've never met you." <laughs> Yeah, because I She's think like, I, I think I true. pointed you out. I was like, "Yeah, that's Jeff down there. He's cool as shit. Go talk to him." And she just kind of looked at you and then had to, and then walked. <laughs> well, I mean, she's what four feet eleven. Yeah, she's and I'm six foot six almost. <laughs> Maybe I scared her off. I don't know. Probably, but but you're 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 a big teddy bear, Jeff. I love you. Don't tell the listeners <laughs> that. I want to come off as a mean guy. <laughs> so when people meet me at conventions, they tell me they like the show and they run the fuck away. <laughs> like, ah. I love your show, bye. That's all I want to hear. I love your show, bye. In reality, these people could call, come and talk to me for like six hours, and I would just like listen to everything they have to say. <laughs> I always attract the weirdest fucking people, like at these conventions. Uh, that's that's the life, man. That's the way it is. There was this guy. I made some offhand comment to somebody about needing change. I shit you not. He would walk the convention floor, and every time he would make a loop, he would bring me change back. It was very nice. But it got to a point where, like, I would see him at the hotel after party, and he's like, hey, I got more change for you. I'm like, I don't have my money box with me, even though I was just using my wallet at the time. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, sorry, but I'll get it from you tomorrow. And then he would, like, come to my table. And then I had this other dude that would just come, like, at, to my table and talk to me for an hour. Yeah. And, on end. Yep. And he would just, like, eat and talk yep. to me. Yep, you'll have people like that as well who, who attach to people, touch to vendors that they can just, sit, like, you have a table and they can kind of sit there and talk to you and they'll do that. That happened to my very first convention I ever did. This lady who was about 40 years old going to a Vampire Diaries convention. I didn't know what it was at the time because it was my first one. She sat and talked to me for the entire fucking convention. Did you sleep with her? No, because she was she wasn't she wasn't a good 40. Put it that way. She it, oh. it wasn't like she was 40 and looked like 35. She was 40 and looked like 60. 40 and looked like 35. Okay. <laughs> that's your that's your definition of a good 40. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, she was 40 but looked like 20. I'm like, no, that's a good 40. I mean, you know, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd go that way too. But she was 40 but looked like 60, and it was just like, ugh, no. You, <laughs> life has been rough to you, lady. <laughs> well, all those damn cigarettes and fucking Anne Rice novels. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Nikki boy. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She sounds like fucking Pennywise the Clown. Oh, geez. I mean, I mean, she didn't she didn't know where anything was in the convention. She expected me to know. I was like, "Lady, is my first one. I don't know shit. <laughs> I don't know." Where That's it how is. it was for me at the Horror Hound last year. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Horror Hound's a good one. It's you know, it's 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 a uh, it's something everybody goes to. I'll be back because I've made good money. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. So, what would you rank a Nightmare on Elm Street? <sighs> Let's see here. I I. Did, I'd probably give it a nine for sure. Cause I mean, it's good and I love it. It's iconic. It's really good. The kills are original. The whole story is original actually, but there's just something like it. I know what it is. It's the end. It's the ending of the movie that, that does it for me with the doll. Well, yeah. With like, no, 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 like not even that, like with the, the dream sequence, it just ends with the dream sequence at the end. All of a sudden everything's like white picket fences and rainbows and shit. And, like, the mom's like, honey, everything's fine. And they go into the car, and the car's Freddy. And the mom gets pulled through that tiny window. Like, that's just really, like, a really shitty it's ending. Shitty. You know, it's like, why are you doing it that way? <laughs> See, I wouldn't even rate it as high as you. I'd give it an 8.5. Yeah. I'll give Dream Warriors a 9. <laughs> I fucking love that movie, dude. From the marionette kill. Oh, the fucking God. Tower. To the fucking prime, just, uh, welcome to prime time, bitch. It's just to me that's everything a Nightmare on Elm Street film should. Be. Actually, there was a guy who did that marionette, marionette costume like that, at oh, in cool. Texas Frightmare, I think. Yeah, he had he had he had the Freddy glove over his head, like he was wearing like a hat, and then he had all the stuff come down to his arms and legs. That's pretty awesome. And it, it looked good. Like he he did a damn good job on it. Did Dixie get into that show? I have no idea. I, I didn't. I got an email that said. That is that is the first convention I've ever heard of that's being exclusive. 
That is the first time I'm ever hearing that. You know, in the future, I'll have made my name big enough to where they'll invite me, and I'll make a big deal. Like, I tried to get in, and you told me no, and then I'll still work it because I want to get paid. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll I'll just be like, fuck it. I'll tell I, I'll I'll want a bitch about it, but then I'll want to get paid. So. <laughs> well, I mean, like that's, that's that's the first convention I've ever heard of that's that's giving that's not you know just being like all right, first come first serve. They're actually yeah, it's fucking stupid. Yeah, which I don't understand that. Like, what what are they trying to do? I hate to say, it, but half these vendors at horror shows sell shit. That's true. Like dumb shit. I'm not putting myself above people, but, like, okay, there's a bunch of artists there. I canvassed the thing. The only dude that I think was, did more than me was the professional guy that does those, uh, like, Scream Factory D- Blu-ray covers. Oh, uh, yeah, Milliner. Yeah, he was there and doing awesome, but so was I. So, But the other artists weren't doing shit. I mean, they get some really weird people. I'll tell you the only reason I started doing what I do, and I don't think I've ever told you this story. I was at a horror hound with my friend or my cousin, and uh, I saw an artist table and it had the shittiest piece of art I've ever seen in my life. And I saw two people buy it. <laughs> it was a picture of Michael Myers. Now this was poorly drawn, mind you. So just imagine a shitty drawing. Okay. It was Michael Myers with a knife by his chest and a bedroom. And on the floor was a girl in a bikini, like straddling the floor. In what Halloween movie does that exist? That doesn't, not nowhere. And it doesn't, and it doesn't even have good composition. I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, the fuck. So that was the moment I thought to myself, Jeff, you can do this. <laughs> and so, god damn it, I started my business a few months later, and now I'm here doing this shit with you yes. and everybody else. Yes. So thank you, shitty artist, because if it wasn't for you, this podcast would not be a reality. Jeff. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm sorry too. <laughs> oh my god, if only Dan was here to apologize. <laughs> he would just be like, hey guys, I'm sorry too. <laughs> so, okay, so we got Nightmare on Elm Street knocked off this list. Next is Evil Dead 2. Mm. How do you feel about Evil Dead 2? Um, I honestly I love both the first and the second Evil Dead. Um, the second one is a little more professional, a little bit better done because they got money for it. But I kind of like the amateur and the crappiness of the first one because it was just like they were they were doing it just to do it. And uh, the second one is very well put together. You have a lot better effects, a lot better storyline, you know, a lot more scenes in it. A lot, a lot of things make more sense. And you know, it's it's just it's just really good. Both. I mean, I would I would I love both of them equally, honestly. See. The uh, Evil Dead 2 is the only horror film that I own on Blu-ray. Oh, wow. Do you have, like, the the nice Blu-ray of it? Yeah, the 25th anniversary. Yeah. I uh, I watched it all... I watched it the other day. I fucking love that movie. It makes me laugh. See, I'm a big Sam Raimi fan. Because of the Spider-Man movies. <laughs> and going back and watching his earlier stuff makes me appreciate those movies and his uh, earlier shit more. Yeah, one thing one thing you should watch is uh, something called Intruder or The Intruder. Because Sam, never heard of it. Um, it's Sam Raimi is actually in it. He's acting in it, and Bruce Campbell's in it towards the end. Hmm, I'll check it out. The Intruder. I'm writing it down right. Yeah, now. it's um, it's on Hulu as well. I know Hulu's got some weird stuff on there, but um, let's see here. I think it's it's definitely an '80s flick. He, just that movie in general, I think it has a really good story. And I mean, the first one's fine, but if I have to sit down and watch one, I'm going to pick the second one. Yeah. Because it's essentially the same movie. Mm-hmm. Just, like you said, better production quality. And I really like the humor. The humor is what sells me on it. Oh, definitely. I can't really sit and deal with the whole, uh, I don't know, overly serious tone. I mean, the first one's not overly serious, but it just lacks the laugh out loud moments. Like when he fucking goes to shoot his hand at the wall and that little drop of blood comes down and that fucking like the torrent of blood hits him in the mouth. <laughs> that makes me laugh every fucking time. Or when the hand runs away and gives him the fucking finger. Oh dude, I love that shit. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I'll tell you this about me. I hate watching movies where people get like, am- like amputations or people lose body parts. I just don't enjoy it. But that movie, when he cuts his own hand off and it runs away, makes me laugh every fucking time. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that is that is definitely good shit. I love that. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, um, I mean those those movies are iconic, and like I think I'm pretty sure the first one or both of them are made in Tennessee. They're more they're made probably like an hour from where I am. Um, and apparently the house has been like torn down for years. Like some asshole mowed it down, like ten or fifteen years ago, which was stupid. I would have loved to have seen that location, even though I hate the woods, just to say I've seen it. Well, I mean, like, you could have done tours and shit out there. You could have offered it for, you know, private parties and stuff, all kinds of all kinds of shit, you know? That, that's a million dollars they threw away. Yeah, definitely. That's a million dollars they threw away. I completely agree. They could have done so much with it. They could have, hell, with the money they could have done just the beginning few tours with, they could have made the place, like, structurally sound and a little bit more comfortable. But yeah. But no, they're just like, we're going to mow it down. Fucking stupid. Um, I mean, I guess I don't have as much to say about this movie because I I love it. I watch it a lot. I think Bruce Campbell's hilarious. Like back to a humorous scene when he starts laughing and he's like doing that squat when the fucking house is laughing with him and that deer head and all the shit the lamp is moving with him. That part makes me crack up every fucking time too. <laughs> uh, the only part that pisses me off is when what's the hillbilly's name? Otis. <laughs> I think so. When he starts beating up Ash, I'm like, what the fuck is this about? I love I love the, the witch saying, I'll swallow your soul. Like, I love that so much. Yeah! <laughs> he swallowed this and he shoots it right in the fucking head. <laughs> I like when uh, the old lady's like, dead by dawn, dead by dawn. And he's like, fucking, his head's popping up. You know that Sam Raimi's brother, Ted, right? Oh, really? You ever see Spider-Man? Yeah. Like those, You know the guy that worked for J. Jonah Jameson that had the glasses? Yeah. That's him. No shit, man. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, Ted Raimi. He's pretty. He's pretty good. I mean, he's had a a career. I'm not saying it's a big career, but it's a career. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 done some stuff. Do you like Army of Darkness? <laughs> oh, dude. I, I think Army of Darkness was my first my first uh, movie I watched of that series because I didn't know what it Same was, here. and the cover looked cool. I remember seeing like the trailer on TV as a kid, and when it came out of the video store near us, um. I rented it and watched it, and I was like, this is amazing. And I had no idea that there were two movies previous. Apparently, there's also a VHS version they did of the movie before Evil Dead 1. Really? Yeah, there's, like, he he did, like, a rough, even rougher version of it on VHS before he got the money to do, you know, Evil Dead. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, I went to the same school that Sam Raimi went to, and during our freshman orientation, that's who we talked about. Nice. Because it was the summer Spider-Man 3 came out, and when that movie came out, it wasn't a piece of shit right away. <laughs> it took, like, three months for everyone to realize it sucked. <laughs> so, by the time when I went to college and my AOP and all that stuff, people still were on that, like, all Spider-Man high. And, I mean, it was cool. It, it's cool to... I mean, I could have met Bruce Campbell once, and I fucking missed it. Well, when he does conventions, he, only, he has an eight-hour contract, I shit you not. Good for him. Yeah. He, he, his stipulations for, cause I've talked, I've had, I, I have friends who have dealt with like the, the side of being with, you know, dealing with celebrities and shit like that as well in the convention circuit. And apparently his contract is like thick and specific and very, very odd. Yeah. Sounds like Bruce Campbell himself. Yeah. Cause I know, I know it's an eight hour contract, which six hours is, uh, signings, one hour is Q and A and one hour is photo ops. Hmm. Yeah. So there is no time to talk to him. Nope. I mean, even even then, when he's in a room by himself, he wants like two security guards there, two security guys there, in case anybody like gets a little too weird with him. Um, and he wants them like like fifty feet or so far away from the table, so that you know it's not a big crowd and they're looking at him and watching him and you know shit like that. So. That makes me like him a little less. Yeah, like he... Actually, it makes me like him a lot less. Fuck Bruce Campbell. I'll go on on record and say it. If I ever see you in public, I will talk to you. But if you treat me like some fucking redneck zombie piece of shit, I'll just tell you you suck. Yeah, because, I mean, like, he, he's... You've heard it as well all, all over news and things like that. He'll always say, like, oh, you know, Evil Dead 4 is coming out. And everyone's like, oh, cool. And then he's, it's like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not what I meant to say. You, you, miss, you, you misheard me. And it's like, no... You're just an asshole. <laughs> God damn you, Bruce Campbell. Because he was just always a celebrity that seemed approachable and likable. Because, I mean, I know he's, his character was kind of cocky, but he just seemed like, I oh, could talk to Bruce Campbell for ten minutes and learn something. 
Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's never the impression I've gotten just because I've heard all, all the stories of people who've met him and who have talked to him. Even during photo ops, he's, like, he's the same way. He's like, person come in, pose, picture, gone, like immediately. No, no, hey, how you doing? It's like, all right, let's do this. All right, done. All right, get out of here. I always tell the story in person. I'll mention it on air. When I went to Horror Hound 2011, I met uh, William Atherton, the bad guy from Ghostbusters and Die Oh, Hard. yeah. He was the nicest fucking dude I've ever met. I wasn't even paying for a picture. I was like, oh, my God, it's the bad guy from Ghostbusters. And the, it was dead. It was like at the end of the convention. He comes over and shakes my hand. He's like, hey, how you doing? I'm Bill Atherton, blah, blah, blah. Nice to meet you. And talks to me for, like honestly, like 15 minutes. It was the nicest fucking dude ever. Yeah, you'll you'll get celebrities who are like uh, another another guy like that is Doug Jones. He loves his fans. He gives every every fan he meets a giant hug all the time. Well, he's a wonderful well, awesome. wonderful human being to talk to, and he's always super nice and gives you the time of day and pays attention to you and and like is always very engaging with you. He's very cool and I mean he does he he does he doesn't do a lot of conventions and if he does a lot of them they're always like either the big ones or the small ones, but he. He's very genuine, and it's really it it really you know makes a difference. Those are always the good stories you hear. I ask a lot of people when we work those shows, like how was so and so, blah blah blah. Like the Green Power Ranger, everyone says how cool he is. I'll eventually meet him. Yeah, he's 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 pretty cool. I remember he was in Knoxville like two years ago, and the only thing that sucked when I went to meet him is that uh, his his handler was there, and I had to wait for him to get done talking to somebody else for so that he could come sign my stuff and uh, take a picture with me. But when he came back after 20 minutes, um, he was fine. He was very personable and very nice and was like, hey, man, what's your name? It's like, you know, uh, he's talking about all the Power Ranger stuff and he wanted to take a picture and everything. And it was really cool. When I was a little kid, I had a White Ranger costume. I wore it every day for a year. <laughs> Seriously, there's pictures. Of, I'll show them to you. I'll put them on Facebook. I thought I was the White Ranger. I had the fucking Saba sword <laughs> and the suit came with a like a... You know, like a jumpsuit, and it had a mask and a belt, and I wore that all the time. Every day when I get home from school, I'd be like, Mom, is my suit ready? And I fucking put that suit on. It was more for time, and I was ready to go. I went to see the Power Rangers movie in that costume. <laughs> I shit you not. Oh, my God. I love that so much. I still have the costume. Dude. It does not fit, but I still got the costume. I believe in you, Jeff. You can fit in it. <laughs> I don't care if I can lose... Uh, 200 pounds and weigh, you know, be sickly and gross looking. I couldn't even put my fucking leg into that costume. I mean, I was a tall kid. I was five feet tall in kindergarten, but I'm a foot and a half taller now. <laughs> I just, I would rip it. You don't rip that costume. You could probably, you could probably get some money out of it. Oh, I don't sell any of my old Power Ranger shit on my shelf. I got all of them just sitting up there. Nice. Yeah, I gotta get my Green Ranger the front of his shield. It's in the other room. But. So, Evil Dead Two. What would you rate it? I would I would give it a ten because it's it's fun to watch. And I mean, regardless of people who have seen it before, or who have seen it for the first time, everybody's gonna love it. You know, agreed one hundred percent. Because it's not it's not really it's not overly gory. It's not overly. Um, over... Oh, it's gory, but in a comedy. Yeah, exactly. Like it's com- yeah, it's 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 not it's not overly like sickeningly gory. You know, and it's not overly scary or anything like that. It's just really fun to watch, you know, um, and it's just a good watch in general. I agree. I would give it the same score. I love it. Uh, I can watch it any time of the year. I do. I don't watch <laughs> it strictly around Halloween. It's a summer movie to me. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, the next movie means we're halfway through this fucking list. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, in theory, I thought we'd talk ten minutes on each movie, but we get in a million it's tangents. True. This is fun. This, it, that's the only thing I love about, well, it's not the only thing, but it's my favorite part about these podcasts. I do it with people I know, so I can say, hey, remember that time we did this? And you'll say yes, because you were there. <laughs> and I don't, if I sound like an asshole, you're already my friend, so it's like, well, he'll forgive me. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> so we got, next up on our list is another movie I saw as a kid, creeped the shit out of me, but... Not really that much. I just thought it was gross, but I love it. That is John Carpenter's The Thing. Mm. How do you feel about Dude, this Dude, love it to fucking death. Oh, my God. <sighs> the action. You got fucking Snake Plissken in that movie. They're in the middle of nowhere. You got aliens, weird, weird practical effect monsters. Um, you have... The greatest practical oh, effects. Oh, God. The greatest. The greatest. Um, the storyline, I mean, everything is fucking perfect for a sci-fi movie. Um, it's, it's perfect. It really is. I'd, I'd have to say that. 
Um, I felt shitty when they made a prequel to it because that was bullshit. And the thing that fucking pissed me off even more is that they used so much goddamn CG in the prequel that it it was it looked like shit. Well, didn't they make the entire film with practical effects and then go in and CGI it? No, well, they they filmed they filmed the stuff with the practical effects, but they didn't like it, so they refilmed the stuff with CGI. Oh. No, 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 that, mean... no, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. They filmed the CGI, but they did test screenings in the locations with the practical, with the practical effects on. They did, like, test shots with them. Oh, yeah, okay. so, I mean, the test shots are there, and I'm sure if you buy, like, the extended, unrated, you know, cameraman cut, they are in the, the Blu-ray or the DVD or the whatever it is you have, you know, it's there. They, they got ten bucks out of me to see that, so I'll never pay to see it again. <laughs> Fuck it. It wasn't... It wasn't the worst prequel, remake, whatever the fuck you want to call it I've ever seen, but it's completely forgettable. Yeah, and I mean, that's... I mean, you had the dude from fucking Star Wars Episode Two and some girl, and that's it. <laughs> Nothing will live up to the original. No, and I mean, anybody who tries to remake it or fuck with it or whatever is going to have a hard time, a really hard time, to even get close to it, even to get 1%, not even 10%, to get 1%. Of what it was. I mean, it. do you consider it horror or sci-fi? I consider it a kind of cross between, honestly. Because, I mean, you have the horror aspect, you have the sci-fi aspect, and they both mesh together extremely well. You know, because you're you're, you're looking at these guys who are at a, in a, I guess, a weather station in Antarctica. I forget exactly where they are. Um and this is a bunch of dudes in a place, and they, I mean, like, one of them is, what, re-watching old football games on VHS tape, or, I forget, a, a game show or something, like, they're re-watching stuff that should be live or whatever, and the other guy, like, one guy's smoking, do- smoking weed all the time, and they're just kind of, like, doing their job, you know, it, it sucks, they're in the middle of nowhere, it's, like, negative 40 outside, and, you know, it sucks. And then also the dog comes along, and you know the sweet the, the Swedish dudes come along, and they have to kill them, and then everything kind of goes to shit. That was the only part of the uh, prequel remake I thought was cool was that fucking dog at the end. Yeah. How it was leading in to be the dog from the first movie? I was like, oh shit! And then the good one happens. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I I love how they they get into the sci-fi aspect of it. Like they go, they find the tapes. They find the giant hole they blew up. They do the calculations of how far it is and the ice and everything. And they're like, this thing landed here so many, you know, thousands of or millions of years ago. And they figure out that, you know, what it is. And it was kind of like, holy shit, this is what's going on. So what do you think the gnarliest scene in that movie is? Because, I mean, I wouldn't call it, like, a kill per se, like when that dude's head separates and grows oh legs my and runs God. off, holy fuck is that gross. <laughs> one thing I love so much about that, there's, it's one of the scenes that happens, like I think Kurt Russell or somebody's like in the foreground of, of the frame or in the scene, and then you see it behind him in like, it's blurred out and shadowed almost, and you see it like growing legs or like walking towards him or something, it's just kind of like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I, I saw that movie as a kid on the sci-fi oh channel. Oh my God. And I'll never forget, my uncle comes in the room, he goes, boo! And I was on the top bunk of my cousin's bed, and I hit my head on the ceiling, because he scared the <laughs> shit out of me. But goddamn, was it a good movie. It was the good kind of scared as a kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that like that is a proper fucking movie. Like, I mean, I would totally buy the VHS, the DVD, and the Blu-ray of that movie, just to have them in every format, in case one like got broken and couldn't play. You know? <laughs> I'd go, you'd go back to the VHS if the other two broke, like, oh, man. Oh, no, I would. I would just to watch it. I mean, yeah, it's on a high definition. It's fine. I just, at least I get to watch it, you know? But that's something that I would go that far for because that movie is 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 perfect. It is very perfect. Do you think that's better than Carpenter's Halloween? Yes. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, I, I think my favorite Carpenter movie is They Live, so, I mean. Damn it, dude. <laughs> And you know what an honorable mention is? Big Trouble in Little oh, China. Oh, I hate you Not so much. Two, I hate but... you so much. You like all those movies? <laughs> yes. Too, huh? God. Maybe, you know, you and I will get together and we'll do a John Carpenter retrospective where we actually 
tell the stories of these films. Instead I'm of just completely them, you know? down for that because like those movies you just mentioned are just like that's that's it. Like those are amazing movies. Well, I mean the horror aspect. None of the other guys on the other podcast know shit about horror movies. I mean. They may have sat and saw, sat through like Halloween or something else, but it's just a movie to them. I think you and I definitely partake in the culture a lot. Hell, I mean, we, I mean, you're you're venting the horror, the horror conventions now. You're in it, you know, you're in it. <laughs> That's how we became friends. Exactly, so. exactly. I mean, once once you get to that aspect of traveling around and doing conventions, or even just going to them, I mean, you're you're in the thick of it. You are there with fans who know shit like you do, or know even more stuff than you do. I mean, I'm not coming home to my house with my autographed Halloween poster by everyone in the cast except Donald You shut your mouth, sir. (laughs) And I'm not coming home to my Freddy Krueger hats and my Michael Myers masks. That Michael Myers mask is comfortable, all right? Don't don't make fun of me. I Look, (laughs) I had one. It's on my Facebook page. You can go look at it. I wore it till it fell apart. I used to sweat through it. I used to, I had to, my, when I took it to school, the hair was falling out up at college. So I bought a fucking wig and I would glue hair into it and then brush it back to touch up the mask. <laughs> and then I bought white grease paint and I fucking painted over the parts where the latex and the paint separated. I like had a patchwork Michael Myers mask. I loved the shit. That out that of that, that that right there makes you a true horror fan. That you did that. That you went to that much trouble to patch up. I don't know a forty dollar mask that you bought. Yeah. yeah. The fact that you took the time to patch up, you know, a Halloween mask, that makes you a true horror fan right there. I actually got laid in that mask. And there you go. That that. And there you go. I was just saying, that mask was with me a lot. It used to sit on the corner of my bed, like the bedpost, mm-hmm. and, I, and I would look at it when I would like play video games and shit. And then sometimes when I was sleeping, I'd face it away because it's kind of <laughs> creepy to have it looking at you when you're yeah. sleeping. But other than that, I loved it. Oh, I gotta tell you a quick story, and it's random as shit. The first day I ever bought that mask, I remember I wore it home because this... I bought it when I was 15, so I couldn't drive yet. So my mom was driving me, and I put the mask on, and I was in my backyard. My mom's like, hey, go up and get the mail or something. (laughs) So I go up to get the mail, and this little kid is riding his bike, and he sees me in it, and he, like, stares at me and makes eye contact as he rides his bike. And he keeps looking at me, and he keeps looking at me, and he falls off his bike. (laughs) And then he gets up, and instead of getting back on his bike, he just keeps looking at me and runs away. So... (laughs) Yeah, so uh, the, the end of the story is I, I decide to go outside in my mask and take a couple pictures, right? So behind my house isn't more houses. It's like an alleyway. It connects to another street, and this alley connects to all the houses that oh are Oh, my God. Street. So I'm walking down this alley taking photos, and I decide to cut through this one house and go home, and it's that same fucking kid's house. And he looks at me. He's like, ah! And he runs in the house and screams, Mom. I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't even know. I wasn't even targeting this kid. <laughs> this poor little... He's probably seven years old. And I was 15. This poor little kid. I scared the shit out of him. Oh, God. And now he's... I like to think, I like to think that somewhere he's afraid of Michael Myers. <laughs> he followed me. <laughs> he has to go through therapy and everything now, Jeff. Real nice. <laughs> Well, you know what, Nick? I, it was. It, it, it sounds like it was. <laughs> yeah, what, like even like I'm 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 what a probably a foot less taller than you are. You're not five six. No, I'm like I'm like five eleven or something. Um, but I've like I I have the mask and I got the jumpsuit and everything and I've gone out in Halloween like that. But it's just weird because people are super scared of you when you have that mask on and not even have the knife, just even just wear the jumpsuit. Like it's really weird. People are, people are super scared of you like that. Dude. I know. I, I actually, to protect myself from getting in trouble, I used to take my friends with me. Cause what I would do is I'd put the, I had the full suit. I'd put it on at night and I would walk around campus and I had four or five guys go with me and I had a camera because what I wanted was a witness in case someone said, oh, this guy in a Michael Myers suit attacked me. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail for some bullshit. But you know, people lie. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. So what I did is I just had all my friends with me. And it got so fucking funny. What I would do is I would stand outside of people's windows and look in. <laughs> and Pete and girls would, like, scream. Like, ah! It was so fucking funny. 
And then I would walk around the corridors of the building. Like, I'd have a friend go to the front door because they shut the buildings down at 9. I'd have a friend walk to the front and come around and let me in the back. And then I would go in the back door and walk around the hallways. And then after it got boring, I would go knock on people's doors. And I would cover up the people so they would have to open the door. And then they would just see me dressed as Michael Myers. <laughs> they would scream and slam the door shut. <laughs> it was awesome. I always had my friends there, though, to be like, hey, it's just a guy in a costume. He's not going to hurt you. <laughs> and then they would come out and be like, really? They'd be like, let me see what you look like. So then I would take off the mask, and then they would see me out around campus. But like, oh, you're that Michael Myers guy. I'm like, yep, that was me. Oh, and one other thing. When that mask started to die even more, I splattered it with fake blood. <laughs> <laughs> so I could at least get a few more uh, wares out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna here. I'm gonna mention you in a couple comments, and you can. Uh, well, maybe I can't. There you go. There's one. There's me in the mask in its dying days. And you'll see a couple more. You'll get a good laugh. I used to love the shit out of it. <laughs> so, would you consider the thing a classic film? Yeah, and actually, the thing is a remake of a 19 like 50s or 40s film. Yeah, the thing from another world. The thing from another right? world, yeah. I mean, I, I've watched the old black and white one, and it's boring as shit. You know, <laughs> I mean, it really, really is. I mean, I gave, I gave it, it's, I gave it, it's, it's time, and I really, you know, folk, I really wanted to watch it to see, you know, what the difference was. And I mean, fucking John Carpenter went, you know, <laughs> light years ahead of that, and he made one hell of a fucking movie, and. It's one of the times where the remake is superior in every way. Yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those rare, rare moments where the remake is definitely, yeah, very much superior. Um, because I mean, I, even even the video game for that movie was like really fun. The PS2 yes. one. Like I wasn't Carpenter involved. I think bit? he was, and um, like I I thoroughly enjoyed that game. I would totally not mind um, buying it again or downloading it again just to just to have it. I need to replay it. I've pretty sure I played it. Or was it on the Xbox? It was. It came out when I was. I came. Out, it came out when we were in like either early high school or late. In two thousand two. Okay, I was in eighth grade yeah. then. Yeah. Well, speaking of classics, let's take it back. Fucking almost wow, twenty two years earlier. Let's talk about Psycho. This will be a quick Ooh, one. Psycho. I like Psycho quite a bit. What do you, how do you feel about it? I love it. It is, it is very, it, I mean, it's, it, it's iconic as shit. I mean, hell, the woman who gets murdered in the shower is Jamie Lee Curtis's mom. Yeah, Janet mm -hmm. Lee. Yep. How did you see Psycho the first time? How did I see Psycho the first time? I think I watched it on T Turner Classic Movies, like, during Halloween, like, probably 15 or 20 years ago, almost. Um... <clears throat> Um, I recently I tried getting a, um, what was it? A Alfred Hitchcock pack of his movies. And the only two things that aren't in there are the birds and psycho for some reason, whatever. Cause they could sell them off. By yeah. Themselves. Themselves. But, um, no, I watched, yeah, I watched the original psycho and, um, you know, very, you know, kind of a slow burn in the beginning. Cause you know, it's black and white and it's an older movie. You know, they really took time to really, really tell the story. Um, but yeah, I liked it. It's Anthony Anthony Perkins um, as Norman Bates is really good. He does it really well. He plays it very innocently and plays it to the point where you know you don't know what's going to happen at all. You don't think it's going to he's going to be the one who starts killing people and killing the girls and you know wrapping them up and stuff. So you know, the first time I ever saw it, uh, actually, it was a clip on Jeopardy. <laughs> Like, the first thing I ever saw from that movie is a clip on Jeopardy. Because I knew the shower scene. Everybody knew yeah. that. But I just remember, I was like, wow, that was kind of creepy. So I think I was in high school and I was on Turner Classic Movies again. And I saw it. And I was blown away from how cool it was. Yeah, it is, it is definitely very it, cool. It was creepy as shit. I loved it. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It's. I mean, it's one of those movies, those rare movies that holds up today. Like, you could. If, if, if they did a showing of it. You know, in a theater, and you went to go see it, it would still be good. It'd still be viable today. I'd go see it in theaters. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. It's one of my favorite Hitchcock movies. Not my favorite, but one of them. Yeah, 
it's uh it's 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 there man it's it's right up there with John Carpenter and Wes Craven and all those guys so I think we pretty much covered everything we have to say about Psycho <laughs> Well, I mean, you can't. So I mean, it's not. It's not as action packed as. It's not as action packed as the thing. It's not as crazy and funny as Evil Dead. It's not as quirky or as gory as anything else we've mentioned. It's just kind of. It's just kind of there. It was the first. Well, not really. The, I shouldn't say the first, but it was like in that line of of slasher movies, almost. I want to say, or serial serial killer movies. I should say. I would like to say that it's the only movie that we've discussed tonight that I'd show to my grandma, <laughs> but I got her to sit down and watch A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 with me, so... My grandmother watched American Pie 1 with me. Oh, how She was loved that? it. She thought it was hilarious. My mom bought me that on tape when it came out. <laughs> yeah, my mom was pretty cool about that. Actually, shit. Um, when I had to take care of my grandmother last month, uh, we watched Fright Nights together, and she loved it. She loved it to death. Not the remake. No, right? God, no. It was the original one, shit. <clears throat> I don't do remakes. <laughs> the remake was okay. I sat through it and didn't hate it, but I didn't, I've never watched it. It's, because, like, that's that's a movie that me and my mom would watch when we were, when I was a kid a lot. Like, every time, every chance I'd get, uh, I'd rent it from the video store and we'd sit down and watch it all the time. And so that movie's very close to me. And to see it get shit on, not once, but twice is kind of, like, sickening. Because the the Friday Night 2 they did that was directed to DVD was actually a sequel. It was actually a remake of the remake. Yeah. Is it? I've never seen it. <clears throat> it's fucking horrible. They, they're they obviously filming it in a European country because it's cheaper. And uh, the only... I think the only good thing is is that, like, it's a female vampire and it's the, it's the woman from Dexter. The English chick from Dexter. Oh, oh, Jamie, what's her face? King, not Jamie King, but I know you're talking about the dark hair. Yeah, and I mean, there's, Lila. yeah, there's, there's like a lesbian scene with her and some, some chick, and I think that's the, the best part of it. Even then, like the fucking guy who plays, um, the vampire killer is like this lame ghost hunting dude, and it's he, he's character. Like, I don't even remember that much of him because they show him like three times in the whole fucking movie. I'll avoid this movie. It's fucking horrible, man. It, like, even, I, I watched, like, even in the first 15 minutes, I had, like, an aneurysm. I was just like, why the fuck are you doing this? What the fuck is this? Uh, How long did it take you to recover from the aneurysm? <laughs> Years? No, it's just, it's, I just hate it. Minutes? Minutes, yeah. It just, it just, okay. it just pissed me off so much. And I was like, I'm going to get, I'm just going to get through this movie just to get through it because I've started it and I have to finish it. Um,. Well, you're not a stronger man for it. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> Instant regret. It, oh, it, it, regret in the quickest amount of time ever. Like, in the first two minutes of just watching it, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, let's jump forward to another, I guess, classic, Carrie from, was it 1976? Ah, yes. Uh, I remember watching this for the first time because of the nude scenes. <laughs> That's the truth. I remember, I think we had, it was on some movie channel we had, and it said, like, LVN, and N stood for nudity on the description. I was like, well, I will watch this. And there was Bush in the first five minutes, so I sat through the whole thing. <laughs> and it was Well, great. you know, uh, the get her done line is, 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 is made in that movie. When they're killing yeah, the yeah, right? Dr. Volta says it. Fuck you, Larry Cable. <laughs> he didn't come up with it. Uh, John, uh, the, um, John Travolta did. Oh, I know, but he made it. Famous. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I see him on those Prilosec OTC commercials, and I still say, fuck you, Larry the Cable oh, Guy. Good. So. Um, so, when did you first see this movie? I saw this movie probably in high school because, like, during the summer, what I would do is the. Thankfully, the video store is still open in my area and he's still, still carrying all the weird shit. So what I would do is during the summer, I would take like all the, all the child's plays or all the, all the candy mans or all the text chance massacres and just watch them in succession for as long as I could, you know, just, just to kind of get really get into it and really ingrained in what I used to watch as a kid, not understand until now kind of thing, you know? <clears throat> and, um, one of them, one of them was Carrie just because like, I had never seen it, and I heard it was, you know, a movie to watch. And, um, yeah, I liked it. It was really good, and it was, um, you know, Sissy Spacek does a very, very good job of playing that character very well. 
you know, like she, she it, I, I'm glad it was her and nobody else, honestly. Uh, she was creepy and good. I mean, it's a very 70s movie, but I don't mean that in a pejorative yeah. manner. Or as a pejorative term. I like it a lot. John Travolta's... Isn't he only in it for a short yeah, time? Yeah, he's only in it for like a, a very, very short amount of time. He's... I don't know. I've never been the biggest John Travolta fan. I don't dislike him, but... I don't... I mean... I guess when it boils down to it, I don't have much to say about Carrie. I mean, I told you why I watched it the first time. So it wasn't the most, like, noble horror cause. <laughs> but it, it's a movie that stands out to me because the ending is awesome. The fucking scene where she goes batshit crazy is the awesome. The one thing I didn't like when I was watching it is that it took them five fucking minutes for the bucket to turn over and to dump it down on her. Like, that whole, sus- like, su- like, suspense suspenseful scene took for so fucking ever for it to finally happen. I was like, really? You're taking this long for the bucket to drain out in slow motion on top of her? Give, like, speed it up to at least double. Like, cut it in half. Come on. Well, thankfully, with the power of uh, Blu-ray, you can just double speed that shit. (laughs) It's been... <laughs> that's very very true uh, i mean like i i still love it i still i think even the, the the woman who played the mom did, a, did an amazing job like she she really really didn't she get yeah. an oscar <laughs> that's just so bizarre to think somebody in a horror movie got an oscar yeah um hollywood like the oscars and all those fucking people hate horror movies so much i mean the only reason uh it's on the lambs one is because they they called it a thriller well, that movie is pretty crazy, too. That'd be something I should... We can cover that next time. Mm-hmm. Yes, we can. I just have to brush... I just have to brush up on it, because that's... Oh, it's been probably ten years since I've oh, seen yeah, it. Oh, yeah, it's been... Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it, too. Yeah. It's not one you gotta pop in every couple No, months, that's... You know? Like, that's that's the movie you watch and there's nothing else on TV, and that movie started, like, ten minutes ago. Like, that's the one you watch. <laughs> Silence of that answer. I always think of that scene in Cable Guy... Where Jim Carrey puts that chicken skin on his face. Yeah. He's like, hey, Steven, who am I? Silence of the lambs. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I just acted that out and you couldn't even see it. I feel bad now. I feel bad. I wanted to be there for that. <laughs> Next time I see you, we'll get some uh, roasted chicken. And I'll put the fucking skin on my face and act it out just for you. <laughs> All right, so we cut out Carrie. Now we're on to a movie that I probably hate the most of the films we're going to talk about tonight. That is The Blair Witch Project. Yeah, um, let's see. The movie was made for $30,000, I think, in the mid-90s. Apparently, all those, all those people hate each other. Well, I hate that girl. The main one that fucking sneezes all over the camera lens. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm gonna tell my mom. I'm so oh sorry. Oh my god, the website is still up. Holy shit. Oh. It's just it the Blair Witch Project dot com. It's still like, yeah, the Blair Witch. The, sorry, the Blair, sorry Blair Witch dot com. It's still up. Holy shit, it's still here. I went on the uh, way back machine. Yeah. The other day. Okay. Oh, wow. Right. It is. Fuck this movie. Let me tell you about the first time I saw this movie. It was, I guess, it had to be Halloween 2000. It was the first year that that film was on VHS. And I had a friend named Tony. I was actually friends with twins. They were named Tony and Andy. I'm still friends with them. And their mom, rest in peace, was the coolest mom ever. So she used to have these Halloween parties where she'd invite everyone over and we could stay up. We have to, it, We'd go trick-or-treating, then we'd stay up and watch movies and shit. And then if there was school, she took you home. If there was not school, she let you spend the night. So I remember we rented the Blair Witch Project the first year it was out on videotape. <laughs> and we sat and we watched that whole fucking movie. And then the ending happened, and I had never been so bored in my entire life. <laughs> Dude, I shit you not. Every This is how I describe the Blair Witch Project to everyone that asks what it's a, what's it about. I say it's about three people who go in the woods, they make a stupid movie, Somebody gets their heart cut out, they find a house, and they fucking die, and a camera falls on the side. That's the movie. Did I miss a fucking scene? Nope. Nope. See? But see, like, I watched it in theaters with my mom when it came out. Um, 
And uh, like I was scared shitless in the theater, man. It was just like it was like the first time I'd seen a found footage movie ever. And to me, you know, you hear you hear the hype, and you know, back then, <clears throat> you didn't have Twitter, you didn't have Facebook, you didn't have any of that shit. And so, you know, hell, I mean, even if those three people had done interviews, nobody had heard about it yet. <clears throat> And uh, I thought it was real. I thought it was a real account of these kids who had died and who had been attacked by ghosts. Like, I didn't know I didn't know any better until about five years after it happened. And then I was like, oh, OK, well, that movie sucks now. <clears throat> I would love to see a picture of you from the year 1999. Because, <laughs> I mean, I've seen pictures of you without a beard, but I just want to see what little Nick looks like. <laughs> Uh, whatever this podcast is over, I'll, I'll send you one in the chat because uh, I've got some stuff at, at home here that I could I could show you. <laughs> oh God, I'll make it the icon for the YouTube video. <laughs> I'll put a silver shamrock pumpkin. Dude, over your head, that'd be though. amazing. Oh, that'd be so good. Um, God, what was it? Twelve more days till yeah, Halloween. Yeah, something like that. Makes me happy. And Halloween's um, on a fucking Saturday this year. Yes. Oh, I'm getting so oh, drunk. Oh God. Dude, the day after Halloween, I'm going to Las Vegas. That's that's the fucking dream right there. Man. I shit you not, my aunt is taking nice. me. So I'm going to party all day, and then our flight doesn't leave till 7 o'clock at well, night. Well, that's really good. You got enough time to kind of recover. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have my mom pack my shit for me. I'm like, hey, mom, I want to look nice in Vegas. Uh, I'll, have to send you, I'll have to send you instructions on how to get to the secret pizza, secret pizza place. Uh, yeah, back to the Blair Witch Project. Um, I don't think it's a very good movie. But I think it's important because without it, we wouldn't have got our next movies. That, that that's true. Like the found footage. Well, I mean, I th- I think there's even one that the Blair Project copied or something. It was a oh, the, beware the Jersey Devil or search for the Jersey. Yeah, Devil. yeah, it copied. Came out. Yeah, a year came out a year before. before, and that's kind of what it copied. And it was a found footage thing as well. But Blair Witch Project gets praised because I guess they had better marketing. <laughs> that movie was actually kind of scary. <laughs> oh, beware the Jersey Devil. Yeah, I remember watching that as a kid on, or not a kid, I was a teenager on IFC, and I thought it was pretty creepy. That, uh, man. Yeah, and I need I need to definitely watch that and see how, what uh, what the similarities are between that and uh, Blair Witch Project. Did you hear about the Jersey Devil sighting last week? Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. It looks so fucking it's... fake. <laughs> it's... Okay, it's like somebody took a stuffed dog, put wings on it, and threw it, because it's like, I mean, I've never seen... A creature like that, but you think when it would fly, it would like move its legs. You know how they like animate the Santa Claus reindeers, how they kind of move their legs when they're yeah. in flight. This thing's legs were like down on the ground, <laughs> like just completely flat, and it was like kind of tilted where its ass was like going to hit the ground. It was just like it's like they just took a stuffed dog, threw it, and took a picture. I mean, that's and people were like, that's oh, it's that's real. that's entirely accurate, probably because I mean, hell, the the iconic picture of what is it, Loch Ness, is, was faked. You know, yeah. everybody's like, oh, look, look, that, that old picture is real. It's like, no, some old dude just got bored, and he's like, he, he took it. That's all that happened. <laughs> the story of America, some old dude. Yeah, I, I, hence hence Bigfoot. That was the suit. Yep, I know <laughs> that. That was an old, day, old guy who got bored. <laughs> that was disappointing. Because <laughs> you used to see that footage, and it was Yeah, so cool. like, that, that footage was it, man. You know, and I remember watching a documentary about it where they where they fucking took the footage and then enhanced it and ran it through like a 4K scanner and did all this shit to it and everything. And I was like, man, you're, you guys are crazy. <laughs> they want yeah, results. Yeah, it's like, jeez. That's where you're getting the results. Yeah. <sighs> that was a Samurai Cop reference, sorry. <laughs> I need to still buy that movie. I keep forgetting to get it. And when you do, send me Dude, so, oh, so quickly, so quickly. I swear. So, we got two more movies to talk about. Okay. Okay, so, up next is the Paranormal Activity franchise. Before we get into any more discussion, do you or do you not like it? Um, I like the first one, and that's about it. I have seen most of them in theaters, and I don't even like them that much. I just, like, I'll go see the new one. I don't know why, but I'm compelled to go see these films in theaters. All the time. I even saw the marked ones with, you know, the Mexican one. <laughs> Mexican Paranormal Activity, yeah. Uh, I saw that in theaters and didn't care for it. And for some reason, I'll go back and see the next well, one. Well, I mean, to be honest, I've only seen the first one in theaters. I haven't seen any of the others just because the first one to me was good because it was like the guy who, like the guy who made it did a good job. He made it for half the price of the Blair Witch Project. And he marketed once again, once again, he marketed it really well. 
he got a cr- uh, like a crowd behind it. I think people had to click something to get it to get it like going on some website whenever it came out years ago. And they had to reach like a thousand. No, sorry, they had to reach like a million or ten million clicks or wants or whatever, and they got it. And then it became a national thing. And I think it came out like in October, and it beat it beat the Saw movie that October by a million dollars or two million dollars, like a, a a pretty small margin. And that's when Saw they didn't make another Saw movie, and they kept with the Paranormal Activity franchise. That's when that started. Well, that's good and bad, because I think the Soul movies are pretty shitty. I like the first one, and that's about it. All of them are just, like, fucking torture porn. I remember, uh, I was at my grandma's. My grandma was my aunt and uncle and cousins. And one day I was watching Saw on DVD, and the movie ended. So when my grandma was in the other room, I popped in the remake of A Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And she thought it was one long movie. (laughs) So she would just say, like, when is this movie going to end? And I wouldn't tell her that it was another movie. (laughs) She's like, so they're in a room and now they're in Texas. What the hell? She thought it was garbage. <laughs> did, you, did you see the fucking 2013 remake or the continuation they did? The 3D Ch- Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Uh, I think if it was on Netflix, I watched it. It was funny because it, I think it skipped Netflix and Hulu and went straight to fucking Crackle. Okay, then <laughs> I didn't see it. I saw the one with like Alexandra Daddario or somebody. Um, I don't know. Let me see here. Because it starts out in a grocery store. Let me see here. Oh, I'll tell you one thing, though. I went to Days of the Dead, and they had a a retrospective panel for Leatherface where all the guys that ever played him were on stage. And then they did a QA, and a and everyone wanted to talk to Gunnar Hansen, and then the guy that played him in the third movie. And nobody gave a fuck about the new guy. (laughs) That's because it sucked. I didn't, it wasn't even out yet, and we all knew it was going to. Well, suck. yeah, oh no, I, th- I think I was, I was, I was at that days of the day because he had his own table or whatever, like off in the corner, and, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm the the new, uh, I'm the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy from the new movie." And, like nobody fucking cared because it didn't come out yet, and nobody gave a shit. Poor guy. <laughs> Poor guy is right. They probably paid him like ten thousand dollars to be in that movie. <sighs> that, that movie was that movie was doomed to fail. It was really doomed to fail because they tried connecting it to the first movie, but the timeline didn't match up, and the way they did everything didn't match up. So, hey, those I don't really. Yeah, the like way the, the way you're talking about it with Andrew, and uh, Alexandra Daddario is Chainsaw Massacre yeah. 3D. That's the one. Okay, I did see that then. Because she is so fine. Let's see who is she? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I loved how it was rated R and they could have shown her tits, but they didn't. Well, if you watch that show True Detective, she shows her bush, so hey. Mm-hmm. Only thing that was creepy is she's in that movie uh, San Andreas with The Rock and plays his daughter. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, don't be a boner killer. The Rock's got to have made her. Ugh, gross. <laughs> and that doesn't even fucking work because The Rock is half black and half Samoan. And the woman that's playing his wife is all white, and this girl's all white. And I kind of know how mixed races work, because, you know, I am one. <laughs> and that just doesn't fucking work. Like, he would not make her with her big blue eyes and big round boobs. <laughs> that would not happen with The Rock's DNA. I've seen his child, okay? <laughs> not, not, not Alexandra Daddario. Huh? No, uh, who was his wife in that movie? What was that, Carla Gugino, the girl? She was in uh, Sin mm-hmm. City. And Dude, in she's Watchmen. fucking hot. Oh, my God. I know. He's probably banging her. In God, life. I, That's why she's I in hope that. so. She was in that movie, uh, Son-in-Law, with Pauly Shore back in the oh, day. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was her, yeah. She was real young and cute. She is. Uh, I mean, like, I, uh, I, I think she's hot as fuck, man, and everything. Like, when I saw her in Watchmen, I was like, damn. Yeah, Silk Spectre mm-hmm. 1. That was a good movie. I think that gets a lot of shit, but... Well, like people it. give it shit to the hardcore, like, comic book fans. Like, oh, you know, the ending is supposed to be this. No, that's like, well, fuck you. I read the comic, and I didn't like it that much. I don't dislike it, but I like the movie more, I'll say. Yeah, because it's condensed, because the comic is just so fucking specific about everything. Yeah, it's almost boring. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's yeah the point of boring, because, I mean, even in between the, sto- the, the main story, there's, like, you know, there's the side stuff that you have to read about, the character bios about every character who's not even in the, the main comic book. They're just, like, like the first, the first masked... Um, Heroes, yeah, Hero, like you got to yeah. read about them. The hooded, hooded justice, hooded justice, knowledge. and things like that, and you have to read about them and who they could be and things like that. And it's just like I don't care. They're not in. They're not in the rest of this comic book. Why are they getting a whole like three page thing? 
you pretty much hit the nail on the head with that. I mean, that's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand char- character, you know, character backgrounds and things like that, but do it about the main characters. Don't do it about characters we're not going to see again. It doesn't matter. I mean, that's just Alan Moore's style. And thankfully, that movie, though, translated well. I yeah, I mean, Alan Moore was against it, and, you know, he was like, no, I don't like the, I don't like what you're doing. It's like, well, fuck you, dude. <laughs> he's just a pissy dude. Yeah, he general. like he just seems like a downer in general. <laughs> he's a fucking wet yeah, blanket for He just seems, and, and I mean, I thought, uh, I thought, what's his name, did a good job, did an amazing job with it. Zack Snyder, right. yeah, I thought he did an amazing job with it. I mean, he did an amazing job with 300, and uh, a really good job with um, Dawn, Dawn, Dawn of the Dead, Dead remake. remake, yeah. I like that remake a lot. Not, I mean, I'm not going to say it's better than the original, because it's different, but I just love that movie. I think it's great for a horror remake. Yeah, for a horror remake, it's definitely good, because um, that's one of the few that I like, because it's definitely keeps with the times, and it's, it's, it's good for you know the time it came out, and it's quick, it's a little gory, it's... You know, it's really, really good for what the, what he did with it. He, he translated it very well. That legless zombie in the fucking uh, garage or whatever <laughs> that climbed on the pipe that was cool. Oh, dude, I love I love them escaping in the giant uh, the giant vans and the uh, propane tanks. I love that shit, dude. And then it plays Dallas yeah. Sickness at the end credits. <laughs> well, not to mention in the middle of it, it plays um, what is it? Uh, Richard, Richard Cheese, Cheese yeah, Richard Cheese, yeah, Down of the Sickness. But it's it's the it's the lounge version. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> that movie was that was awesome. I bought it on DVD. Oh yeah, man, that's yeah, that's definitely a buy. You got to have that because um, it's just good. It's just good. Just just good. good. Now, I, would you put the Paranormal Activity franchise as just no. good? <laughs> Me neither. I go to those movies almost to people watch because I can't help but laugh at how dumb these movies are in the premises, like. I'm more open-minded about paranormal shit in real life, but goddamn, are those movies fucking stupid. Oh, man. It's... I mean, the first one was good. It was very long, and it took a while for things to pick up. But once they did, man, like, kind of progressed really well. Even the ending was really uh, messed up because, like, his wife leaves the bedroom, and you just hear this, like, blood-curdling scream, and he, the husband's like, honey, honey, and dr- runs downstairs, and then he's gone for a while. And then all of a sudden you see him hit the camera, like this back of the camera, like he's been sh- like shoved through the door. And then she starts to like, I think she starts to eat him or something. Something. And then she screams at the camera. Yeah. And, and I mean, it was just really jarring. It's like, holy shit. You know, and just, yeah. And it would just, it would just end. And it was really good. I I don't know what the other parts are. And I think they're, I think if. They're all prequels. Oh, fuck. Really? Well, well, two. Okay. Two. I think it's a prequel to one, but like a couple days before or right after. No, it has to be right after because she gets possessed in the first movie. And then she kills the, her sister's family in the second one. And then in the third one, it's in the 80s. <laughs> and they're little kids. And that was okay. That came out on my birthday, too. I remember spending my, I guess it would have been my 20th or no. Like, 23rd birthday seeing that movie. What a waste of a day. I snuck Chipotle in the theater. And ate it. <laughs> uh, nice. The fourth one has nothing to do with those people. Yeah, uh, Katie moves across the fucking street with that little boy from the second one. And it was stupid. His name's Robbie. Yeah. Abby smells like piss. That's a weird. That's a weird kid. And then this... And then the, my favorite one was the marked ones because the ending was awesome. Because you know how there are these coven of witches or whatever that worship the devil and it brings on the demon okay at the end these mexican gangbangers show up with shotguns and just shoot these women across the screen it's fucking hilarious because you know in all these horror movies like people are running around in the dark and shit happens and they all get killed because they're afraid this dude's like fuck you bitch and just start shooting these women across the fucking <laughs> screen he's got a shotgun and when he went down and died i was like no I was pissed. He was the best character in that fucking movie. Because realistically, in all the horror movies, you want the most ghetto dudes. They will save you. Even that's if they true. Don't like that's you, true. They like Le- Leprechaun in the Hood, man. You know, that's that's true. I like that movie. <laughs> I like that fucking movie. It's stupid, but I like it. When I went to my friend's house for spring break, he had a, what was it, Chiller? Or what was the channel? Yeah, Fear Fear Net. Net. 
back. This was wow. This was like 2000. Yeah, when, when the channel was in its infancy, now it's dead. I know that's sad. Holliston was a great show. Yeah, Holliston, like Holliston, I like as a filmmaker because that guy's trying to like Adam Green's character trying to be it, and I think Otis makes a good speech at the end of season two that was just like you know. Like quit fucking complaining. Like do then do your nine to five and be miserable, and quit fighting and you know make your money and get married and live in a white picket fence house and just quit fucking complaining or get up, dust yourself off and keep fighting. Like it was it was along those lines. I don't know exactly what the words are, but I mean it was like it was like that. Isn't that yeah? Guy he's dead. dead. Well, That's I mean. Sad. I met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him. I met him at Horrorhound like f- briefly for a second. Like he'd sign my Holston poster, and I mean he seemed cool. I didn't know he was like that hardcore into drugs and shit. <laughs> well, when I went to Days of the Dead the following year, Adam Green and them had a whole panel on that show. Yeah. Um. And he was in the costume. Yeah, yeah. I well, yeah. When, I, I I didn't when I saw him, he wasn't in costume. People were kind of like, oh, maybe he's not in costume. I was like, he's still there. <laughs> well, he was in, dude. He was in costume, and they were pretty much they were showing clips from the upcoming episodes, and they were. It was really cool. That was one of my favorite panels I ever sat in. Like, yeah, that, that's one thing everybody says is that uh, whenever they do the uh, the readings of like when they really do the live readings, it's like the best thing ever. Well, I I back to what I was talking about, Chiller though, with Le- or uh, Fearnet with Leprechaun in the Hood is. I remember, I guess it was Fearnet on demand. And I just remember sitting in my friend's basement in the day because we would drink at night, and I would watch like the shittiest <laughs> horror movies. I watched The Dentist with I was like Corbin yeah. Ferguson, and it was so <laughs> fucking gross because it showed him like drew out these women, this woman's teeth, and they were like made of wax, and it showed it. I was like, ew. <laughs> and then Leprechaun in the Hood came on, and it was fucking oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was so fucking awesome. But you know what's not fucking awesome? The Blair or the Blair Witch Project is not awesome, and neither is Paranormal Activity. I don't like those fucking movies. I think they're dumb. I'm gonna see the new one because it's the last one. I'm gonna go on opening night. I want to go see it with a bunch of stupid teenagers. <laughs> I want to fucking yell at the screen. Okay, I go to those movies as a spectacle. Like I went to see Mama in oh, theaters, geez. and I saw it at like nine o'clock on a Friday, and. I think somebody screamed out black power in the theater. No, I went to see the purge and you know, the black dude that they save and how he like shoots the lady at the end or something. The highlight of the movie was this guy goes black power. And we all started laughing. (laughs) I mean, the movie was shit. Yeah. They're doing a third one too. So, well, the second one was fine. I thought the second one was pretty good. Uh, especially like the ending where he goes to the guy's house and he's going to kill him for killing his son or whatever. And then he has like a moment of clarity and doesn't, I thought it had some decent story uh, elements. It was almost like a Punisher Ooh. film. They should do a Punisher film in The Purge. <laughs> the Purge. The Purge. The Purge. Coming <laughs> soon from Incarnate Studios. <laughs> let's shoot it for $20. <laughs> Deal? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> All right, it's happening. Fuck it. All right. This has been a two hour and 30 minute show. Let's finish up this fucking recording uh, with our final film of our top 10 horror films, The Dead Zone. Now, this is a movie not a lot of people have probably seen that are going to listen to this, all 12 of them. (laughs) But as of now, as of October 19th, 2015, 11, 19 p.m., it is on Netflix. And I can't give this film a high enough review, praise, rating, whatever you want to call it. I absolutely love the dead zone. I do too, man. Like I, I, I watched it probably at least four or five years ago. Cause I was interested cause it was like Christopher Walken. And I remember the show being on and I liked the show. The show was pretty good. I enjoyed the episodes yep. whenever they came on. And I was like, this is, this is a movie. This is a Stephen, Stephen King movie. So I rented it and I watched it and I, oh man, I loved it. I mean, you have Charlie, I think Charlie Sheen. No, Martin, Martin Sheen. Sheen, Martin Sheen's in it. Yeah. And um, Christopher Walken is, you know, the main guy, and I mean, it's yeah, it's just wonderful. And I mean, the way they did it with uh, his visions and everything, the way they showed them sometimes, the way they filmed them were amazing. Um, my favorite, my my favorite part is when he's at the uh, the guy's house, and he's like, "Don't let these kids uh, skate on the rink," you know. The ice is going to yeah. break. <laughs> and like he, he fucking smacks the table and breaks it. Breaks it. He's like, yeah, he says, the ice is going to break. And I was just like, holy shit. 
And then I, I love the subtlety of it because it didn't have, you know, the money to do big, big scenes like that. And it was just like the newspaper. They showed the next scene. Like kids died in, you know, um, the hockey accident or something, you know. Yeah, and he saved his son. And that was such a cool scene, though, because the father reads about it. And then you think, oh, man, he went through with it and his kid's dead. And then the kid walks in frame. You're like, exactly, oh, exactly. Like, it's really, really subtle. It's extremely simple. And it has such an impact. It's really good. I remember just uh, thinking how sad it was and how much I liked it, though. Because, you know, he has that girlfriend that he probably was going to mm-hmm. marry. And then he has that car wreck. And it's like, oh, he wakes up from the coma. How long has it been? Five years or something? Yeah, it's and been a while. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been five years kid, at least. And he's missed his opportunity. And you think when she comes to spend the day with him and sleep with him and all this stuff, like, oh, his life's going to get better. She's going to leave her you know, husband and all this stuff. No, it's realistic. It's like, you know, you are essentially dead. And she moved on with her life. Yeah. And Christopher Walken has to accept it. And it's just interesting how it goes from kind of like – that kind of film dramatic role to to like a like a pseudo sci fi film when he has to stop Martin Sheen from becoming president. Yeah, because like I and, and, and I love I love the scene where they show like his future where he like nukes the planet or something and starts World War Three. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like oh man, it reminded me of war games. It was so eighties with all the equipment and the and the briefcase and the thumb and like the hand scanning or whatever. Like it was crazy. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it too. It was in Martin Sheen was just so awesome as a bad guy. Oh man, like when, whenever he's in those powerful roles, even like even in East Wing, man, or West Wing, sorry, East Wing, <laughs> West Wing. Um, he... One of the wings. <laughs> even in that, like from whatever whatever little, little bit I saw of that, he was good. Whenever he has a powerful role, man, he fucking does it. He's really good at that. It, I like I said, I popped it in. Well, I didn't pop it in. It's on Netflix. I turned it on the other day. And I just remember I I stopped what I was doing to watch it. It's it's powerful. It's yeah, awesome. that's and the credit scene. Yeah, that's one of those things. That's one of the things about the movie is like you don't want to start it because you know that you can't stop it until it ends. Because that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna watch it. You're gonna stop what you're doing. Sit there and watch it. It's. I think of all my st- all of, of all the Stephen King adaptations, it's my favorite. Even over Shawshank Redemption, which I think is a great movie. Well. Yeah, I think I like that in The Mist, though. I know The Mist is a very unpopular movie for that ending, but the ending is what... The Mist me. scares the shit out of me. What? Because the part in the movie where the religious woman starts getting followers and starts accumulating, like, cult followers, and they start listening to her because she can supposedly hear God, that scares the shit out of me. Because that's that's that happens in, in our life today. Like, that's a thing that happens. You know, people hear those things and people follow dumb other people, dumb people. And, you know, they go crazy and, you know, they do dumb shit. It's I'm with you 100 percent. That is creepy. And when she gets shot. Yeah. And I mean, that was the biggest relief in the movies when she gets shot. But I mean, the way that she accumulates followers and they're willing to fucking die for her because it's been like because she's talked to them for like, oh, like what, three or four days, maybe five days. I don't think it's even that long. I thought that movie took place over two days. It may, yeah, that, maybe two days. But even yeah, that's even scarier. Then in two, in forty eight hours, she gains like half the followers of that grocery store. Like it's that's even scarier that that happened. People are that scared and crazy during that time that they will listen to anything that anybody says that makes an ounce of sense to them and just follow it and believe it with their heart and die for it. I think that's why Stephen King movies resonate with me because, yeah, some of them are about fucking supernatural elements and ghosts that turn into spiders and, you know, Corey Feldman with glasses. <laughs> but just something about that whole religious belief system that people buy into is scary because, like you said, it's a real thing. I think the real, the more realistic uh, horror film is, and I don't mean in suspense terms but i mean topics topical in a topical manner the scarier it is to me like when i talked about that movie the den for a brief second earlier that scared me because that kind of shit happens Mm -hmm. you know i mean people get targeted and they take over their lives online and they can end up dead i mean you hear about all those deep web stories that's the kind of yeah fuck that shit dude like i said it to me it gets 10 it's a great way to end our top 10 list (sighs) 
because yeah, I mean it's 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 I, I gotta give it a ten as well, just because I mean it's it's so good, it's so so good, and um yeah, I mean it's 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 definitely one of those movies that you have to put everything aside and watch because it's so damn interesting and it catches you immediately and you can't let go until it ends. I might watch it tomorrow. I might watch it once we're done. <laughs> Shit. So this has been the inaugural episode of the Incarnate Studios podcast. This was our top 10 horror films, or at least top 10 that we reviewed and then talked about 20 other. <laughs> uh, we hope you had fun listening to it. It's the first of many horror topics we'll discuss here at Incarnate Studios. We're more than just art. We're a way of life or something like that. I've been Jeff Hicks, and thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.